So basically, uh, I haven't done live coaching session in a while, but I have done them before. Uh, I've yes. learned what communication from me can potentially be detrimental to you, like while you're playing, it actually make you play worse. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I've taught you a lot about where to play the map, what to think yes. about at certain times, that kind of stuff. So like, say you get a kill in the game, I'll be like, okay, lane's pushing, now what? Or any objectives to take? I'm, I'm basically going to be saying questions to you or things to think about that we've already talked about. None of it's going to be new. Yeah. It's not going to be something you've never heard before. And uh, it's with the intent to make sure that you have the thought process speed of me, meaning like the second something happens, I'm going to tell you what you should be thinking about. But during the middle of a team fight and stuff, I'm just going to let you do your thing. You know, like I'm not going to micro any abilities. I'm not going to tell you buttons to press. It's just something where I tell people, including you, all the time what questions you need to be asking yourself throughout the course of a Dota game. And the goal of this live session is that I can kind of be in your ear saying, hey, you know, what lanes need to be pushed? Or what's your next objective? What you or do you want a ward somewhere? Or... Yeah. Banana slam. Jam. Um, so everyone here, welcome. Uh, this is going to be the final session of our uh, first season or whatever. We got the final exam, practical exam, that uh, Ari came up with. You want to explain to them exactly what's happening today, Ari? All right, guys. Uh, this has been... Wait, let me turn off my AC really quick. I want to make sure the environment is well for this final night. Yeah, I'll turn off my AC as well. All right, go, go. All right, so it's been a wonderful... It's been a very educational five weeks hasn't it been so to those to chat watching we've been doing getting out of guardian this has been a coaching series made possible by predator philippines thank you so much predator philippines man i'm learning so much and from when we started to where we are now it's been uh it's been educational and i've learned so much what i know now compared to i still have a long way to go compared to what i was just you know discovering back then uh, it's it's just the game has been so much fun to play. The, ba the game has been a challenge that is not as frustrating as it was before by not knowing. But we have learned core concepts uh, throughout um, the past uh, five weeks. This is week five. Uh, this was a five-episode coaching series. And today is the practical exam, where basically I try to apply everything that Coach B has been teaching me. and. Coach, I've been nervous, man. Much I woke obliged. up, I was anxious. You know, I never really finished, you know, I, I, I stopped college. You know, it wasn't for me with entertainment. I just went straight to entertainment. But this feels like a college exam. I feel like a little bit, you know, my wife reassured me in the morning. She gave me a hug. She was like trying to calm my nerves. You're going to do great. You've been working on this. I'm like, you know what? I had a bit of a weird dream. I'm just like, why are you having a weird dream on the day of your final exam? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just like, all these little thoughts just getting me. And I've been preparing all week, coach. I've been preparing all week. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited and a bit nervous. But uh, I've been really trying to apply the core concepts that you've taught me. And uh, it's just about moving efficiently. Um, and I'm just not trying to learn so much um, all at the same time. But how... Ah, <sighs> how? What do you think I need in regards to focusing? I'm just gonna focus on what you taught me all the past four weeks. Uh, so basically, uh, I haven't done live coaching session in a while, but I have done them before. Uh, I've yes. learned what communication from me can potentially be detrimental to you, like yeah. while you're playing, it actually make you play worse. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is I've taught you a lot about where to play the map, what to think yes. about at certain times. That kind of stuff. So, like, say you get a kill in the game, I'll be like, okay, lane's pushing, now what? Or any objectives to take? I'm, I'm basically going to be saying questions to you or things to think about that we've already talked about. None of it's going to be new. Yeah. It's not going to be something you've never heard before. And uh, it's with the intent to make sure that you have the thought process speed of me, meaning, like, the second 
something happens, I'm going to tell you what you should be thinking about. But during the middle of a team fight and stuff, I'm just going to let you do your thing. You know, like, I'm not going to micro any abilities. I'm not going to tell you buttons to press. It's just something where I tell people, including you, all the time what questions you need to be asking yourself throughout the course of a Dota game. And the goal of this live session is that I can kind of be in your ear saying, hey, you know, what lanes need to be pushed? Or what's your next objective? What do or do you want to ward somewhere? Or yeah, that kind of stuff. Do you I, have enough I mana? That. I, love, I love that. I love that. You're nurturing my triggers. Yes. Nurturing my triggers. That's the goal. And we want to see... After the game, I am curious, because I haven't done this in a while, exactly okay. how it's going to feel for you. Like, did the game after I coached you feel easier, or did it feel more stressful, or, you know, what, what is your overall impression of the game after it's been played from my perspective? For whatever reason, my Dota's taking a little while to... I had to reload Dota, yeah, I, and I it's see, updating. I see, I see Agent VHD up there. Yeah, yeah. I you can have a coach rank, I heard. Is that true? Um, is it true? I don't think so. Either way, I can watch your game live, but I can try to join your team coach, or as a coach. So feel free to invite me to the party, and I can try oh, yeah. to be doing, a coach. Doing, 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 inviting VSJ at the party. Oh, dude, my, my, the, the guys I play on stream are going nuts. <laughs> they're so, they're like, oh, we're gonna get flamed by VSJ. Yes. <laughs> They're I'll so primarily excited. be flaming you productively, but yeah. if I'm saying like, hey, your teammate's out of position, let him go, or stuff like that, or yeah, like, yeah. you know, be ready to fight, that's the kind of stuff I'll be saying. I'll be like, uh, you know, you're level five, go find your level six. I'm not gonna, that, like, I'm not gonna tell you exactly where to go, I'm gonna tell you like, hey, you need to find your six before you're useful, that kind of stuff, uh, is what I will be telling uh. you, so... Your teammates may get flamed after the game, but during the game, okay. I can't really afford... I've learned myself that it's generally bad to focus on what my teammates are doing wrong, other than how it's affecting me. Meaning, like, yeah. if I want it to be in a fight, oh, but my teammates yeah. are taking a fight where I don't want to be there, the way that I look at their play is like, okay, even though I want to fight, I don't want to fight there, I'm not going to fight. So that's how it, it, it's in reference to my perspective of the game. It's not like, what should they be doing? I'm not trying to think to myself, how could they fix what they're doing? I simply think to myself, what they're doing in reference to me. And that's the clearest way I think you can think about Dota. Um, it's something I will try to encourage during this game, you know? Uh, so do we have a fifth? Are, 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 are we getting a fifth yes, guy yes. here? Yeah, I'm getting. I'm on a freaking message uh, thing. All right. Uh, we like, do not accept uh, my, lack of punctuality here. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Seiko, can you can you play? Can you play safely? Can you play one? Let me get. Let me get. Yeah, he's divine, so he can do it. I, I'm guessing we're probably gonna go on rank, coach. Okay. Absolutely fine. I would love to go. Is there Let's a chance go. you're right. using your webcam mic? By the way, it has like a little static on it. Oh, that's interesting. Wait, uh... Just check it. If it's not, people are mentioning you might be, so it's worth checking. But if you're not, it's fine. It's not terrible quality. No. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Um, there you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. That's yeah, probably better now. That is way better. Yeah, okay. It definitely sounded different than your normal mic, so glad we yeah, got that. Yeah, because I think I, plug, I plugged it. Yeah, my, when you uh... plug it in, it Discord automatically triggers it. Okay. My one is just updating. I think my uh, uh, he's just updating his game. I think the one I invited is, is still asleep. He's still asleep. He's still asleep. At eleven a.m. What are these? You know, gamers, gamer schedule. Yeah. What can I you do? Think, I don't know. He's probably I don't know playing Dota all night. Oh God. Why can't he just you know be responsible and play Dota in the morning at a decent exactly. time? Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Totally. Uh, hi chat, by the way, man, some, some, some people from your chat kind of just hang out on my streams and they've been very, very nice. Thank you so much, uh, you guys, um, uh, for being very encouraging. Uh, there's this one really funny bike. Come on, go little MMR boy. You can do this, buddy. Oh, don't do that. You're giving me a heart attack, man. I'm just like, they've been very, very nice. So what's up chat? Thank you. Um, it's, it's it's like they're like I it's feel like it feels like I know this guy because you know they they've been like you know seeing the progression over the past five weeks, 
But yeah, man, it's been so fun, man. I'm just waiting for Kai, but then we're gonna start. But it's been so fun this past five weeks. I've I've learned so much, and uh, I've I've what I've realized for myself, Coach B, is uh, it's so funny that you mentioned team fight where you're not gonna say anything. Like you're like, I'm just gonna let you team fight yourself because I feel that's like a different zone, right? That's a different muscle. The things that you're supposed to be doing team fight, I think that's gonna come down the road. And I, I remember a three K five supports a big thing you did. You were coaching a Bane, and you mentioned something about saying that you're you're not really impacting the team fight. And for me, that was so interesting. I was just like, you're not really impacting the team fight. Um. So in that sense, I was just like, there's something basically. When there's the most optimal thing to do when you're moving around the map, correct? Like, which is farming, doing all these things, warding at the right time, being mana efficient. There's also the most optimal thing you can do based on your matchups on team fight. I'm discovering. Absolutely. There's certain heroes you're supposed to target. There's certain heroes you're supposed to position against. Make sure they don't find you. Uh, mm. There's a lot of things to think about in team fighting. Uh, I firmly believe that team fighting is something that naturally gets better it's just learning to press buttons learning from experience um i also do believe it can be analyzed and broken down some in a similar okay. way to like map movements and everything uh but at the like so that you learn faster but i also believe that you don't have to take a proper team fight until you're like 6k to actually get even more like I, I personally believe that i personally believe if you play the map 6K? properly yeah, I'm saying if you play the map properly, you don't have to be able to push buttons very well. Like, I, I actually firmly believe that. Like, you'll... I... My proof of this is that I have been on my all-hero challenge. Okay? Yes. This isn't, like, a brag. It's actually hilarious to me. I got really okay. tilted, like, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. This patch yeah. was really boring to me. And I was like, I hate picking, like, the same heroes over and over again, buying yeah. necro books, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, I'm yeah. just going to make Dota interesting again and, and play hero challenge. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to get creative and I'm going to have to try to win in whatever way I can. And a lot of these heroes I, I haven't played in a long time. I have a record yeah. of 20 and 4. And three of those losses were on ET. So uh, other than ET, I'm 20 and 1 right now. Okay, so, 20 and 1. Okay, 20 ET, and 1. sorry? ET, Elder Titan. Elder Titan. That's the so only hero that. I really struggle with. But the funny thing is, I've been playing with a level head and just playing conceptually... Like, okay, this is what my hero is supposed to do in the game. I know this core needs me to do this. If I'm playing this core, I know my team needs me to do this. And it just works. And I'm not pushing buttons very well. Like, because I'm not, I haven't played these heroes at all. Yes, that's, yes. Like the, that's like the proof to me that mechanical skill is nice. And eventually it really matters. But you don't need it. You just, like, you just don't need it. And it's something that, that you will so get. You will get it by just playing. Like, you will push buttons better. If you play a hero 30 times, you're going to push buttons better on that hero than you did the first game without me coaching that's, you. That's so comforting. That's so com it's, it's comforting. It's crazy, that's, right? Like, for me, I'm like, wow, so these comforting. games feel so easy. And it's not it, – like, some of them, maybe I got lucky, right? Maybe some of them I shouldn't have won. But it doesn't yeah. lie to you when you're when you when I have like an 85% win rate playing heroes I just don't play and I'm first picking most of the time like I'm I'm absolute first picking whatever role I'm playing and it's like wow I, it's crazy how it works out it's almost like coaching you has proven to me that I should like test my concepts and theory on you on myself you know if I just approach the game with this mindset that I'm really saying hey Ari if you do this every game you will win more than you lose. Let's and see how it works it. on myself. It's done wonders for me. It's hard to like listen to your own coaching. You know, it's yeah, yeah. it's easier said <laughs> than done. Uh, looks like we do have our fifth player though. So we're ready, we're are ready, we we're ready, ready to ready to get it going? We're ready to get it going, Let's go. coach. Here we go. Here we go, boys. Here we go, chat. Let's go, everyone. All right. Um, uh, man, we're probably gonna find. Let me see if we can go rank. If we can't, then. SCA, find a good region. Can we go ranked? Coaches are not permitted in rank matchmaking, so we go unranked. I can still coach you guys live. Like, I can just watch you live, but it's up to you. But there'll, there'll be a, won't there be a delay? No, there's literally an option to watch a friend live, which okay, means okay, it's go. actually live. So if you guys want to do ranked, I can do that. 
Um, uh, I think it would be, I like, um, cause you're just going to be coaching me anyway. Yeah. Right? I'm just and coaching I, you. I'm I, not coaching the team. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, coach. Yeah. No problem. Where are you at here? As long as the only rule for me coaching live is that one of my friends is not on the other team, which that I highly doubt I have a random oh, friend no. in SCA that's going to no, run No, no, they're, they're, they're fine. They're fine. Rolls. Okay. Rolls. Okay, they're ready. Oh, my boys are ready. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. We got a divine. We got an ancient. We got a crusader. Well, you we have a divine in your party and you're allowed to queue together? I guess, you know, man, Valve, you know, we're ready. What's your MMR now, Ari, by the way? People were wondering. I, guys, I am at 1120, I think. Wait, let me see. Still got a long way to go from Crusader, but... It's just, I, it's more of the lessons, honestly. It's just, uh, but yeah, I'm 1120, but I have a very good uh, win rate right What's now. What's your win rate then? That's probably a better indicator. One, I'm just curious. So far, how do you check? Um, for the past one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. What's your last five, 20 six, games? Seven. Like, what's your last 20 games win rate? Uh, one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Out of 20 games, I've lost six. You've lost six out of 20. That's that's pretty yeah. damn good. So we'll take that, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my my good. emphasis to people, uh, that's great. Uh, I wasn't actually sure how good or bad it was going to be. I knew it was above yeah. 50%. But um, the emphasis is, is that Dota is a team game. Your performance if above average, will win you the game more than 50% of the time. And that's how you gain MMR. So I don't expect you to have an 80%, 90% win rate. Uh, are, are you inviting me to the party intentionally? Yes, because we cannot um, we cannot go with the Divine there. Yeah, that's what I thought. So Yeah, all right. So we got Coach B back. All right. All right. Here we go. All right, let's do this. We're just going to unwrap Oh, I need the uh, Coach. Sorry about that. There you go. What is up with? Come on, man! Why are you having me pick my server? Let's go. Okay, here we go. We might get some. We might get some Smurfs. Yeah, whenever you start going in the three K, four K bracket, you start risking Smurfs. Yeah, we might get some. We might get some Smurfs, but it's unranked. I, I would have preferred rank, but um, uh, one guy couldn't make it. My my brother will join you. We're okay, Benung. Not right now. Slinky, sorry, man. We're already good, buddy. Hi, my son. Wait, come here. Wish daddy luck. Say, say hi, Coach B. Hi, Coach B. Oh, hello. Hi, Coach B. Good luck, daddy. Good luck, daddy. Oh, thank you, my boy. I'll do this for you. Let's go. Thank you. Fighting for the family, literally. For the, yes. For the pride. Thank you, son. Thank you, my love. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, man. And then we ran into, like, freaking crazy-ass Smurfs and get destroyed. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen, but if it does... Uh... I would say the reason why I stopped doing live coaching sessions was just the pure risk that the game was just really bad. That's why I stopped doing them, so. Mm, I see, I see. Uh, it happened maybe 20% of my coaching sessions, and I'd end up having to, like, do another game, and I'm just like, this was so time inefficient. So, obviously, really? in your case, if we get a really bad game, I would like to do another. Uh, yeah, okay. Like, when I say really okay. bad, like... The enemy team's clearly smurfing. You guys lose by 15 minutes. And, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. We are still queuing. Uh, okay, okay, I think, I, think, I think we're good. Wait, it did that stop and go. Oh, there you go. Here we go, coach. Here we go. Here we go, boys. Here we go, boys. I'm going to go maiden. I'm going maiden. Zikiro's been great. Oh, my God. I think these guys play together. These you guys, guys should get a five stack, right? Most of the Dude, time. Look at them. Your turn. Yeah, it's probably it's a five stack. They look really good. 
We ban. Fuck, Five man. Seconds remain. Oh, I'm on the dire side here. Okay, I see. Ban a hate am. Okay. I'm gonna get maiden. Oh, the first pick, Ooh, timber cool. saw. To pick. So you're most that's likely gonna... against the timber saw. We'll have to see, okay. but that's the most likely haste. So going into this drafting stage, I'll Ten mention some things I randomly ready. think of. Obviously, I can talk to you way more now since the game's yes, not course. actually Five started. Um, so I usually just think, okay, so to pick. you're against most yeah. likely a timber saw Nyx. Uh, okay. These two heroes, how do they threaten me? You know, what are you? What are you thinking? Like, what's really important in your Ten starting items remaining. if you need anything uh, you, for you to play? What you said is um, uh, timber saw needs to be freaking destroyed early game so he can't basically scale, right? Yeah. So we're gonna do a lot of trading with him. So I'm gonna need. And depend who's gonna be my one. Um, Dark Seer, really? Ten seconds. Remain. I don't know. Fuck. Wait. Dark, Dark Seer is an off laner. He's Five gonna be off laner. Remain. Who's gonna be my one then? Mm. Um. Uh, so with Tim, you don't so have to destroy him early. The point is that he's weaker early, and then when he when he gets level three, it's usually really hard to trade with him at that point. All right. So I'm gonna go. This is ninety. This is one ten. I'm gonna go remaining. thing mango windless south. Wait, and... I can't see. Oh, I can't see your perspective yet. Okay, I see. Okay. I'm guessing I'm gonna get a salve here because I remember you said trading is important. Absolutely. I think it's so. Yeah. You have a drow safe line. Yeah. So, I just want you to think about, you know, how does Drow want the lane to be? Does she want it underneath her tower? You know, what, what kind of dynamics to the lane are good for Drow? And if you don't support Drow very often, kind of just make a guess. I don't want to give you Drow. any answers. I don't want to give you any answers because I kind of want to see what you do. I just want to make sure you're asking yourself the right questions. If you don't know the answer, make your best guess. On your own usefulness uh, against those two heroes. Because Drow has a lot of bursts, so he's gonna, she can freaking attack and go a lot. Uh, I'm just wait. What do I need to do with Drow? Yeah, I'm just saying you got to support every carry hero differently. What do you think? Are you gonna play up in front? Are you playing in back? Are you playing mainly pulling? Or you know, what are, what are your responsibilities in the lane? That's all I'm asking you to think I'm about right now. Wait, who's, wait mid? who's mid? Who's mid? Who's mid? Who's mid? Who's mid? Okay, wait, okay, let me wait, get let you, me get uh, you uh, your tangos, your tangles, please. please. Tangos? tangos? Tangos. Blood. Blood. You don't want tango. Let me give you one tango, buddy. You bought a tango. <laughs> there you go, buddy. I gave you one. Do you want two? I'll give you two. Oh, wait, you have already... He has three. Should I still give him? Uh, he doesn't look like he wants tangos from you, so that's fine. That's their choice. As long as you're willing to give them tangos, it's you're all good. Bag. It was the thought. Exactly. These guys, they have a phoenix. I think, oh man, Jakir, this look, these guys look like they play. I haven't really played with a freaking... Mm. All I can say is you're not going to be able to do anything you you haven't already learned. So just play according. Okay. Like, don't worry about their skill level. Just play based on what you know. Like, that's all you got to, okay, like, don't, don't try to overcompensate. It's a big thing okay, to coach. not get psyched out. Okay, coach. They're gonna run at us. We can't fight against Egg early. Mm, okay. Bo, but Dr Drow is a good counter to Egg, right? He's pretty nice. Range right, right clicker. Okay, Kai said we just. Okay. The battle begins. Oh man, I should have let that one go. What's your first item you're gonna buy in this lane? Um, uh, you don't always have to answer. It's just something like maybe queued up in your quick buy. Well, if we're gonna freaking go, we're gonna go stick for sure. Maybe since we're gonna trade a lot. Denied. That's not good.
Bro, I'm gonna pull, okay? Well, he's not contesting. He's about to contest my pull. Alright, here we go. Deny. Ooh, don't fucking do this. There's gonna be another wave that's coming underneath your tower while your drow's farming here. Not this time. Your top tower is under attack. That's not good. Ooh, it's not gonna get overextended there. Ooh, it's not good. Ooh. Should I salve myself yes, or save salve it? Salve yourself. What are you guys doing here? There's a lot of creeps dying. Okay, Drow's gonna go get him. Your top tower is under you got attack. it, bro. I'm gonna pull 45, coach. Pulling, bro. You can also soak XP from the big camp that they're farming with your creeps. Okay. While, while your draws back here. That's an option. Oh. You do have 280 gold if you think you want an item you can afford. Okay, I'm gonna get a stick. Uh, definitely get some mana. Wait for a little bit more to get more mana, because I'm gonna be useless piece of shit right now. Which is not good. And I do need a freaking ward there, man. All right, they're doing his thing. He's level three, my dro is. How's my dude? Okay. Dude, I'm gonna pull at 45, you all right? I'm gonna keep pulling at 45. All right, here we go. I just wanna keep the waves as much as, yeah, it's their waves already there. All right, here we go, man. Give me that mana, man. Good shit. Ooh. Shit, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, man, that's not good. They just freaking dove. Someone should TP. TP! Cool. No. I'm Gabe Newell. Right, You've just on. achieved first me. blood. Right, Thanks and have you. fun. Someone should have TP'd top, by the way, just for a little bit of help, but that's fine. Dro has a self. Wow, you hit hard. You want to walk back to top? Do you want to TP back top? Or are you done with top? I think I want to TP back, man. Go for it. Come on, man. We got to kill this dude. Remember, he's a level 3 timber saw. Oh, he's three already? Your top tower is under attack. What surge is this? Your top tower is under attack. He's a three timber saw is getting fat, boys. You can always make sure you soak XP from that big creep on the camp dying right now. Even maybe get the last okay. hit. Just be careful. Oh man, this timber saw is getting fat, dude. Your draw's still out level, you know? No reason to panic. Okay. Alright. Don't you definitely need a ward there. Oh man, I gotta I just overextend it a bit.
Your tusk is rotating. Good shit, boys. Go ahead and pull. Right now, right now, not right now, right now. The only time I'm gonna micro you. Thank you. Got that shit. Alright. Fucking need mana. And fucking need a mango, maybe, just in case. Your top tower is under attack. Careful, buddy. Your middle tower is under attack. Man, that timber saw is tanky. Yeah, man. you basically heal him by right clicking him, by the way. Oh, do we? Yeah, oh, he gets. He right you right clicking him does so little damage that he's healing from it. Okay. Your middle tower is under attack. And this timber saw needs to fucking die. You can pull again. Yep, I'm gonna do that. Your middle tower is under attack. Dire structures are fought. You are against a mid Jakiro, so it's worth considering if you think your teammate needs help defending the tower. Your middle tower is under attack. You all right there, buddy? Up there? Yeah. Mitch Akira, really? Akira's coming top. Oh shit, here we go. Oh shit. You have boot money? Yes, getting boots. Overall, good job helping him defend mid. Yes, no worries. Think about any items you may need on top of the boots. Great. All right, you're right there. Guys, Timbersaw is fat as fuck, bro. Uh, Your Darkseer is teeping top. Has been All right, let's go. Oh, guys, we got three top, three top, three top. Fuck, this timber saw is fucking annoying. And here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Fuck. Give me those boots, man. Four top, four top, uh, three top, three top. Careful, careful. Your top is under nice. Good shit, boys. Good shit. So the enemy team has been playing a lot top. Where do you think their wards are? This is a time you can consider de-warding. Okay. Almost 10 minutes. You can also consider the bounty runes. Sorry about that. Got it. Outpost Guys, as well. Need help bounty. Outpost. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. You both get it. It's going to be so close. Ugh. That's a situation oh, where if you guys were like two seconds faster, it would have worked. All good. That's yeah. how you learn. Sorry about that. Yeah. Hey. Oh, there's a bonus, right, that he got? Everyone on the team that has one captured get XP. Okay. They probably warded here, I'm guessing. Around this area. Your top tower is under attack. Your top tower has fallen. Okay. Could be worse. Not too bad, they did use ult. I wanted to deny the tower. I wanted to deny the tower. Absolutely. Uh, Everything during the game we'll be talking about after, by the way. So don't have to okay. I, I'm perfectly fine if you want to explain your reasoning. I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to critique you or anything right now. All right, all right. Nice coach. All right. Fuck, we need mana. Give me another one, man. Give me Your mid-tower is getting dove right now.
Man, these guys, man. Who has a better late game? They are getting both mid. Man, this timber, dude. Top tower is under attack. Your top tower is under attack. All right. Can we push bottom? Take mid? Yeah, okay. Jakiro's there. Man, that fucking timber. Buy yourself a TP? Yes, sir. Totally forgot about that. You're gonna look for a kill who you're gonna play with. If they're gonna take a tower, which one's their target? Okay, boys. They're gonna definitely try to take uh, mid. Oh shit! Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, he's gonna kill me now. Oh fucking hell. Don't fucking do this. Don't do this. Killing spree. That was a kill. All right, fucking smoke. Do we need another mana? I've never played a magic hero. All right, so we got a, we got bot. Yeah, keep pushing bot, man. Oh, shit. Your get out of there, tower buddy. Is under attack. Your middle tower has fallen. Shit, shit, they got mid, boys. Oh man, they're fucking pushing like crazy. Good shit, boys. Your top tower is under attack. Good shit, boys. So when the enemy team is pushing multiple towers at once, the best thing you guys can do is just choose one and defend it, just like you did there. So if they do that All again, right, just decide to commit with your teammates one way or the other. Okay, guys, if they push a tower, we commit to defending one, okay? We commit to defending one just like that. Oh man, not enough mana for all. Use abilities. Oh, he got me. Double kill. Ah, not enough for ult. Regeneration. I was pressing ult, wasn't enough. Damn it. All right, I got four deaths. All right. You guys are getting bottom tower. Not all that bad, all things considered. Okay, got bottom here. The enemy's bottom tower. That timber was tough, bro. Okay, that I got a timber is very man. tanky. Fuck, where do we need to ward now? Guys, you wanna... Fuck, wait. Are we strong enough to smoke bottom? Oh, wait, no, we gotta push mid, wait. No, you guys are in very mid. passive mode right now. Your cores are farming cores. And Darkseer is not a ganker either. Alright, so we gotta farm. Drow, let's go. Your only playmaker is Tusk, so if you're gonna gank, it's with Tusk. Okay. Thank you, coach. For the twins. What the fuck? So your two options, if you think you guys aren't gonna make a play, is to ward your own jungle to protect your Drow. Or it's okay. bottom if you want to ward to make a play. He sees you. Yeah, he's there. He definitely has a ward around. Oh, no, he has an invis hero. Okay. Yeah, they got me. They got me. So in games like this, you guys... It, it's... Okay. You basically need to play with your tusk at this point. Wherever okay. your tusk chooses to play, that's where you should be. Okay. A dominating hey, good job, boys. I thought they warned you. Thank you, coach. Not very familiar with this draft. No, absolutely. It's fine. So at this point, the game's weird. You have to say, okay, do I play defensive or aggressive? And who am I primarily playing with? And in this game, it's your Tusk. So that's basically, since you're the weak one in the of the two heroes, you need to follow the guy that's strong. This Tusk is going to 100% dictate where you play. Wow. 
Warding. Your top tower is under attack. Your drow's there. Your drow's helping against Shakira bottom. Okay. Hello, this is Dave Newell. Thanks for playing Dota 2. Double kill. They're unstoppable. Good job, Double man. Kill. Good job. Now that you're dead, I find it easy to respect you. Thanks. Are there any waves to clear? Is there any wards to place? Yes, there's a definitely freaking wave to clear right here. Check out respawn oh. times. Brew just TP'd bottom, so he's stuck there for the next 80 seconds. Brew just TP'd bottom. Guys, Timber's up here. So in this wow. spot, you gotta ask yourself, are you looking to play away from the opponent when they respawn? Like, do you guys want to fight again? Are you looking to run at them? So when you see this Brew TPing bottom, based on what you would prefer to do, you're either gonna run at them or you're gonna run the other way. Anything in I'm between is kinda bad. Brew's there. I'm gonna run away. Okay. I'm gonna run away. So in that case, you can consider walking mid to push it. You can TP top to push it. These are all options. Either way, when you win a fight, we want to at least push lanes. So based on dodging the opponent or playing near them, that's what lanes you choose to push. So in this game, you said you want to play away from Brewmaster. He just TP bottom. You can be inclined to TP top if you want. Can't TP yet. Yep. So now that everyone's respawned, you push the wave that you're at, and then you go back to the status quo of what I told you before. Who are you playing with? Where? Why? So you can maybe push one more wave if you want. Absolutely fine if you think you can. Ooh, run away from that. That's a boost of travel. Fucking got me. Fucking Jakiro mid, are you serious? Your Tusk is coming. Fucking kill this bitch, bro. I got ult. Oh, let's fucking go. Oh, fucking that Tusk. That Tusk can fucking go, man. Look at that Tusk. Play near your Tusk. He's your kill. Play. Yeah. You gotta be ready to follow him up at all times. You do have 800 gold. Oh, right there. Oh. Killing spree. Didn't need that ult. Fuck, no mana. That sucks. Definitely best to just run away from him. Yeah, he's fucking scary. You do have 900 gold. Go, 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 go. Tusk. Go, 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 go. Tusk. Good shit, boys. Have silence, go, go, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's only level one. Oof. Yeah. Oh shit. Get that, that dude. There you go. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Fucking A, man. Let's go. Ooh, Essence Ring. Do I need money? Do I need Essence Ring? Do I need heal? Uh, money, heal, money. I need a Glimmer. Okay. Uh, fuck, 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 fuck. I got the boots. I got the thing. I can Consider get sentries and dust for Nyx as well. Got it, coach. What surge is this? All right, uh, fuck it. Ooh, levels, I'll take that. Know where to immediately be, so just walk where you think you'd want to be. Do I want the talent cast range, or do I want XP? Hmm. 
wait, I like the fact that I survived that much longer, so maybe that extra life would help with the ult. Alright, let's fucking go. Right now, they're gonna basically try to push mid. I should fucking ward mid. The objective they're gonna take next is Roche. You're right, you're right, you're right. Roche in top tier 2. Warding Roche, boys. Guys, you guys want to smoke triangle really quickly? A very strong move, so look at your teammates' items. Your Bloodseeker just got a BKB, your Drow's almost got a Manta. Is that your mango tree? That is not your mango tree, so you want to cut that down. One of your teammates should cut that down. Monster kill. Oh, you got me. You got me. Nav heal there. Oh, fake. I'm gonna fucking need one more smoke. Man, we still need to get that mid tower. I just realized. Remember to keep the status quo of playing with Tusk. Yes, got it, coach. I remember. Uh, oh, need more words. Ah, uh, fucking dust, just in case. Radiant structures are fortified. Guys, there's a mango tree there, by the way. Tower is under attack. Fuck top. The guy right on you, man. Got it. Oh fuck! I'm here. I'm alive. Fuck. You've been alive this whole time. You never died. <laughs> Thought I died. No, I was like, what is he doing? I'm just gonna wait, but you never died. Tusk saved you. I hmm. thought I died. I thought I died. I was like waiting to respawn. You can push I, I one more like... wave top. I thought I literally died. I was like, where? When do I respawn? I didn't die. Yay. Maybe I can push one more wave. Yeah, just be wary of what you see on the map right now. Your Darkseer yeah, yeah, may be I... in some trouble. Darkseer is dead. Yeah, feel free to nuke it one more time. And you got a GTFO. Maybe TP mid. Oh! Yep, TP mid, TP mid. There you go. Might be able to get a kill on this timber saw. Kill this fucking timber saw, boys. Where's Timbersaw? He was just mid, but uh, remember, they're going to be coming from top, so be a little bit careful here. Nice. Fuck, oh, man. I fucking should ward Roach. So if you guys are taking objective, it's either going to be mid tower or bottom tier two. So you're either counter playing them or you're playing for your own. Your two cores are playing bottom, though. Guys, you, you want to take this Phoenix really quick? Guys, you want to push bot? Want to push bot? Let's push bot. Let's push bot. Top first. Are you serious? That are is you not sure a play. That is not a thing. Let's not push top. Coach says no. No, 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 no. Come on, let's smoke. Let's smoke. Let's smoke mid. Let's yeah, smoke. Let's fucking get this timber smoke. smoke. Someone, 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 come on, someone, come on, come on, come on. We can kill. We can kill. Let's go, fucking go, man. Got it. Die, you bitch. Bloodseeker is chasing. Go, go, Got it. Go, go, go. <laughs> Good job, boys. Good job. Let's fucking push. You guys can do Roche. You have Drow. Call Roche. Let's, let's Roche. Let's Roche. Let's Roche. No, no, Roche. Roche. Yes. Roche, 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 Roche. Roche, 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 Roche. Get a ward up. Aggressive one. Perfect. Sentry on top of it for Nyx. For the twins. Thank you. 
That's Roche, boys. Come on. Your job to stall, so if anybody comes, just make sure they don't get in there. Cool. Nice Roche. Take the timer. Guys, smoke, 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 smoke. G, 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 G. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Get this. Oh, fuck that. Get on that right now. Place a ward on this high ground uh, right here. Yep. Right here. Any high ground's fine. Just something to help you do what you're doing. Put, put the wards. You have dust for Nyx if he goes into this. Inside. Yes, there he is. You have 2200 gold as well, by the way. Got it, coach. Dominating, I guess. Oh no. Nah. Now you bitch. Top tower. Egg, 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 egg. Harry, Harry, Harry. You got me there. You can still use nukes. Cause you're low. They're all melee damage. Run away from that. <laughs> Secure's back, Secure's back. Yeah, Drow is Aegis still. Good shit, boys. Let's go, let's go. Alright, fucking buying Glimmer, let's go. I will ignore your email number of kills. Make sure you get more dust and sentries and wards and stuff. Looks like Tusk bought a lot of them. You can TP bottom right now, TP bottom right now. Regeneration. I'm pushing this, I'm pushing this. Your middle tower is under attack. What? The enemy's top tower is falling. You can keep going. Keep going. Get more out of it. They're all still dead. You're not taking any towers. Alright guys. I'm gonna keep pushing bottom, okay? Yeah, tell your team to cut towards bottom after they push mid. Guys, please cut bottom so we can get a tier 2 bottom. You can get outpost on the way there too. Okay. Let's you get you outpost. can beat your team there. Coming. I can give a Phoenix. Your glimmers in backpack. Okay. Got it. Yeah, you can nuke it one more time. Also that guy. We can kill. Actually, we can Go to your team. Go to your team. Coming, 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 coming. A dominating performance. Good job, boys. <laughs> Let's keep up. That timber needs a fucking dime. Did. Mega kill. Nice. Oh, no. Get killed this guy. Dust, dust, dust. Oh, never mind. Tower, 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 tower. All good. You guys still have ages, so you can go high ground. You're just gonna have to plant a sentry at the tier three. We can go high ground. We can go high ground. We can go high ground. We have ages. They're unstoppable. Good shit, boys. Make sure you lay a sentry. Mega kill. Behind, behind, behind. Good shit, boys. Go high ground. Let's fucking go, man. We can still go, we have creeps. Just yeah, let's keep going, keep going. Let's go boys, keep pushing. There you go. The enemy's bottom tower has fallen. Bounty runes coming up. Mid tier 2 is an option. Outpost as well. Guys, someone, do you want to get mid tier 2 really quick? Mid tier 2? We don't have body We can go, we can go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Getting creeps, let's go. Oh, fucking A, man. You can get bounties while your team pushes if you want. I'm gonna get bounties, bro. Ooh, I love that. He just expires in 30 seconds. He just Enemy's expires in 30. Has fallen. Yeah.
This will come. You have two thousand gold, man. You're rich. I do, man. Uh, fucking gonna get. You need a survivability item for yourself. You can consider force or yules. If you don't think you need those, you can go like Vlad's or something. All up to you there. Fucking get force. Fucking should have gotten a dust. Uh, guys, I got one more smoke. We can definitely kill. You guys 100% need duster sentries to play fights. Okay. Your next objective is Roche, so that's not going to be up for another two or three minutes. But you do want to make sure you protect your wards and control guys, that area. Let's, let's, let's smoke here. You guys want to smoke or... Uh, oh, let's get their triangle. We can get their triangle. You can just walk up there. You don't have to smoke. Yeah, we can just walk and get their triangle. Your bottom tower is under attack. I saw Drow there. I saw Timber there. I saw Timber there. Oh, Timber misses chain. Nice. You ward the high ground if you can. Nice. We got this. Let's go, boys. You hit the egg. Oof. Try to help your draw escape if you can. You have four staff and glimmer form. Okay, it could be worse. Your Bloodseeker wasn't there at all. Bloodseeker. It's fine. Uh, just keep playing for Roche. Keep an eye on the prize. If you want to deward if you while you can, perfectly fine. I always try to plant the sentry first. You can deward that. There's wards there. Yeah, because you want to see if they have wards there first before you place the ward. You see that, right? Where? Oh, the... oops. Where? Where's the ward? Oh yeah, oh I didn't see it, sorry, sorry. Pushing mid, pushing mid really quick. That was unreal. My favorite kill is the Mon double kill. They're unstoppable. That was unreal. Double kill. Monster kill. That's how More we fucking do it, bro. But less than four kills. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Let's go, bro. Go, go, go. You can go. Push, push, push. push. Put your Edmund courier in Roche pit. Got it. Middle tower has fallen. Is a sentry for Nyx? The enemy's middle tower has fallen. Good job, boys. Roche is up. Your courier sees it. The enemy's middle Guys, uh, Roche is up, by the way. Roche is up. Roche is up. Wait for Drow. You guys could probably start it without her, but we can, yeah, we can go. We can go. We can go. Gra Drow can catch up. Yeah, I'll be in the. Yeah, you can catch up, Drow. And Roche. Yeah, they're just gonna freaking. We got a bunch of creeps push. We're good. You can consider nuking mid right now. Okay. Keep going, boys. They will not see what hit them. Mid nuke. Then yeah, you have twenty four hundred gold again. Shit, that's a lot. Good. More detection. You can consider an aura item for your team, like Vlad's, if you want. Oh, Vlad's. Yeah, probably need. They have Vlad's. 
What is that? Worry about it later. You can buy it now and just you have it in full. Immortality. Oh, you're right. Nice. Thanks, coach. Be careful. You should never be in front of your team like this. Yeah, sorry. I wasn't looking. I was looking at the map. Sorry. All good. Let's go, boys. All right, we're going. Uh, fucking uh, push. Got it. Sentry coming. Sentry coming. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing there. Nothing there. Web A destroy. My old. Oh. Good shit, boys. The enemy's top tower has fallen. The enemy's top tower has fallen. The enemy's top tower has fallen. Oh, no. Nice, boys. Good shit. Good shit, boys. How we do it, man? Gonna let that. I'm just gonna let that go really quick. Just Hold let it. that go. Really Hold it. Oh, it's over. DT boys, good shit, man. Good shit, boys. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, good shit, boys. GG 4619. It's a fucking stomp, man. Let's go. GG boys. GG GG. Well played, everybody. So, Jeez, oh let's my get your God. fresh initial impressions of having me somewhat backseat you on the game. Uh, what, did, what did it do to you in the game? How did, did it change it the game for you? Um, uh, I never even thought of Vlad's when you mentioned Vlad's. And I think that's because we were already winning. I didn't really need much of a BKB or anything because we were doing fine because our team fight really had a lot of damage. And we were pretty much handling them fine. So when you said Vlad's, I'm just like, Oh, that's very interesting. Um, uh, I appreciate the help. Wait, let me commend my boys really quick. Command, 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 command. GG, GG. Oh my God, wait, let me let that sink in for a bit, coach. Let me let that sink in for a bit, coach. Yeah, hey. embrace it, man, embrace it. Embracing that shit. Yeah, practical exam 4619, man. Woo! I don't know if they play together too. They seem good. That was a fucking timber, dude. They were freaking. That timber was a nightmare. Oh fucking a timber nicks. Oh four six twenty nine. Holy shit! That's not bad, bro. That's not bad. Oh, uh, Coach V. Coach V. Oh shit! Oh my god. All right, the wins are looking pretty good, man. We're doing well. All right. Oh my god. Whoo, coach. Yeah. That felt really. Good. That felt really good. I'm glad, oh. man. Uh, it was funny to watch. The highlight for the game for me was when you thought you were dead, and I was just watching you stand there. And I was like, "When's he gonna do something?" I see him like, I'm like, I understand that sometimes it takes a while to buy some items, but I'm literally watching you be like, "Okay, I need, I need some dust. I need some centuries." I'm like, "Okay, go on." I, I heard something. I heard like the gold kill, and I was just like. I think, I don't know if that was a creep or anything, but when he sunrayed me, I was just like, okay, I'm dead. I'm going to wait till I respawn. And I thought I was dead. 
<laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not trying to i'm not trying to give you too much shit. i just thought no, that no, was no, that no, was really no, funny no. to me that was really stupid i was like wait oh chat probably freaked out with that one they were probably like oh my god oh coach it felt really good having you push i can tell you were giving me more than you said that you wanted to you're just like i'm just gonna chill for a bit i'm like wait you might want to do this you might want to do this which i really appreciated there's some games uh, or sometimes where i realized i like i said i haven't coached live in a while so i realized yeah. that i couldn't possibly ask you the question before it was too late to do what i needed you to do so i just or that you're supposed to do um yeah so in those type of cases, I would hope from that you would learn like the instant thought of me telling you to do that maybe yeah. would help mold the way you think about that scenario. Um, so my initial impressions of that game mm. were that they had a Jakiro mid and a Timbersaw top. So what a lot of people, like if you're new to Dota, don't understand about Timbersaw is his reactive armor makes it so that he can tank towers, he can tank creeps when he's like level 5, level 7. So, he was pushing crazy. Yeah, so what that means is the hero itself doesn't do that much damage to towers, but he naturally shoves your tower like over and over again because he just tanks the tower and tanks the creeps. And then they had a Jakiro mid. So he's going to naturally shove your tower a lot too. So I can just look at their draft and say, hey, like you're going to get a lot of tower pressure on your mid tower as well as your safe lane tower pretty much constantly because those aren't heroes like shaman where they lay down their wards and take the tower in one fell swoop they're heroes with liquid fire as well as timber saw kind of just tanking over time that are con consistently going to just keep pushing your tower um yeah. so the game from hearing you have your like inner monologue and stuff you were kind of panicking like just you know with all constructiveness yeah yes. around like the 10 minute mark you were kind of panicking yeah. and my question for you is do you remember what i said to you around that point play around tusk that's yeah. what calmed me down play around tusk right and so in those types of spots it is really important to just decide hey what teammate do i play with because i've realized doesn't matter what role i am if i'm having a tough game if i don't feel strong like in that case, you are a five position. That's going to be a lot just because you're the five yeah. position. Who could make me strong? You know, if who can I play around that can allow me to have impact in the game? And so it's like for me, I know it's tough because I just know like, you know, a lot of experience in Dota. But for you, you just I need never, to. I would have I would have never considered Tusk. I okay. would have never considered Tusk. Yeah, and for you, it's it's amazing how easy the game is once you have the answers, right? It's like, hey, just play around Tusk. And suddenly, like, I'm not giving myself too much credit. You guys were just killing everybody. You, you got, like, eight kills in, you know, four or five minutes there because you and Tusk were running around. Um, Tusk is a great four to play around. Like, he he has a tag team spell that makes all everyone do a shit ton of damage, so he naturally is the hero that wants, like, one or two heroes to play with him um and so what also made me come to that decision is darkseer is not a ganker he naturally shoves waves with his ion shell and he builds like team fight items drow she was kind of farming bloodseeker he was kind of farming so the point is is that maybe you can play around those other cores meaning you can gank with the bloodseeker you can gank with the drow you can gank with the darkseer but the tusk is going to be a part of it every single time. Like, he has to be. Otherwise, it's going to fail. So, that's something that you can learn with time, and it's hard. But identifying, you know, who do I play with, that kind of stuff. Go ahead. No, go on. You, who to play with, go on. Coach, who to sorry. play with, and who's going to enable you to have some sort of impact in the game. Because it's even harder to do it when it's not your hero. It's like, when you're strong, it's like, okay, who do I go kill with my strength? That's not that hard. But noting who on your team could make you strong, that is a hard concept to practice. It really is. Uh, I, I I didn't know. I, yeah. How do I tell, coach? Like, how do I know, okay, this is the best person I should play around. What are the factors that would help me decide, okay, this is the best? Because Tusk is a four. Yeah. And in my, in my head, like, I mean, just based on, you know, what I've learned in coming forward, I play around a core. But to play around a support, uh, that never occurred to me. So, in general, when you play around somebody to get kills, it's... 
you need two things. You need stuns and you need damage. Like, that's all there is to it. So, at the early game, what are you? I'm, I'm out of the game, I'm damage. I'm a Crystal Nova. That is mainly a stun, actually. Like, it is kind oh, okay. of damage, but when I say stuns, I'll say control. Because okay. slows and can be included in there. So you're pretty much a slow and a frostbite. That's pretty much what you are. You're going to yes. offer, like, maybe two Crystal Novas at most, which is like 500 damage. But the main thing is you're slowing somebody and you're going to lock them down with frostbite. Yeah. So I like to ask myself, what part of the equation am I? Am I, the am I the control or am I the damage? And whatever one I am, I have to find somebody else who does the other. So you're you're the, oh you're the control. You are the control. And Tusk is 100% damage. That's all Tusk is. He is 100% damage. Tag team is like the most damaging spell at like 10 minutes into the game out of like any hero in the game, probably, to be honest with you. Like that, that's not... I don't, do you know what tag team does? I'm just curious. Tag team is uh, the wait. Sorry, coach. No, tag Ta team. Tag team from Tusk. It's his third spell. It makes oh, is it that so. The one? Oh, is that like the aura that gets yeah, it's a, like? It's an extra aura damage. around him that makes everyone hit for an extra hundred damage. Whoever is attacking the targets near him, and Holy it slows. Shit. It slows too. So it's like you who hit for fifty now hit for hundred and fifty if you play with Tusk, right? So. You who hit 50 now hit for a wow that's yeah it's a big difference crazy. right so it's like in the mid game tusk is the type of hero you love to play with and when you say how do i get better at this and stuff it's just understanding you need stuns and you need damage you need control and you need damage and over time <laughs> you'll start to notice trends certain heroes offer stuns certain heroes offer damage and sometimes certain heroes need items for instance to do damage so it's like early game damage. drow doesn't really do enough damage yeah, but he was with farming. Tusk, he does. Like, Tusk makes heroes do damage that didn't previously do damage. So it's like, in that game, you and Tusk are, like, the two that have to be there because you're the stun, and he's the damage. But then on top of that, since you're losing, you need a third hero. Like, you're going to need anybody. Like, uh, I could have told you in the mid-game if you're going to kill Timber, like, I just know this from experience, you needed you, Tusk, and either Drow or Bloodseeker. Drow. It can't be Drow Darkseer. It had to be Drow or Bloodseeker. And, and we killed him. We did that top. We did that yeah, top. Yeah, you did it twice. And there was one point where you had Darkseer with you. And you guys actually just sat there looking at the timber for like a minute. And I'm just like, I'm not really going to tell him because like I can't explain that in the middle of a game. But you, Tusk, and, yeah. and Darkseer are just never killing a timber. And that's the kind of stuff where if you were like, hey, I'm going to play with Tusk. We can gank to this Darkseer. And you try to do it and it just yeah. doesn't work. That's how you yeah. learn matchups. Like that's that's, how, that's the only way. Like you, that's the only I, way you can get better at this, right? There's no. I freaking love it. Yeah, there's no Your secret to this. Timbersaw is very hard. hard. Yeah, he was freaking a nightmare, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that I had our coaching session last week on Timbersaw, and then we played against the Timbersaw today. Um, yeah, yeah. You said that. I was just like, wait, man, we got a Timber. Yeah, it's. And I think that's one of the rare times I played a Timber offlane. Um, Maybe once. Oh no, no, yeah, that one time. But I, I don't play Timber offlane a lot, so I didn't get to really apply what you were teaching me um, when we had that session on Timber. Absolutely. But... So the thing is, is over time, say you know you learned what I told you about Timber, but then you don't play against him for like two weeks, for instance. Yeah, I didn't. Maybe you're gonna mess it up because you don't exactly remember, but you're going to see things happening where you're hitting the timber and he's just not dying because he's level three. And you'll be like, oh yeah, BSJ told me, you know, like his reactive armor level two is really strong. I probably shouldn't be hitting him as much now that he's level three. These are the type of things where you may not remember them immediately just because you haven't dealt with it in a while. But I would hope after experiencing it, it would like trigger, you know, like, oh yeah, I remember yeah. hearing that. Oh shit, I knew that already. That happens to me, like where I know something about a matchup. I haven't played the matchup yeah. in a really long time and I die stupidly or play the matchup wrong. And I'm like, oh man, yeah, I knew that already. It's, God. it's like, I, I just haven't played this matchup in a year. So it's like, that's something that's natural in Dota, but as long as you're kind of paying attention You'll, yeah. you'll get it back really quickly. It's like initially learning the matchups is really hard, 
But once you have like the general outline, even if you tend to mess it up again because you don't play against it very often, you'll learn much yeah. faster the second time than the first time. You know, it's kind of like collecting old knowledge. So in that game, the funny thing about it is I could have told you exactly how the first 12 minutes is going to go because yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Your carry basically griefed you because I'm going to ask you, what is like one of like, how does CM like to play lanes? Like, how does she play in general? Is she really far up in the lane? Is she sitting really far back? She's behind. She's behind. She's behind. So what kind of carry does she want? She wants someone that... A tanky carry. Who a sits in front one. of her, right? Yeah. How does Drow play the lane? Um, he, She's behind. And she wants a support that does what? She wants a support that will tank the damage like Ogre. Yeah. So if you're two heroes that want somebody to tank for you, it makes the lane really yeah. bad. Like you're going to have a terrible lane. Like, a, like and what I, I mean by terrible is because you were pulling a lot and you played a lot away from the lane, your drow was actually out leveling the timber saw. And that's an impact of you supporting better than the Nyx. Like the Nyx was just soaking a lot of XP. It is always better for you to be level three and drow to be level five and a half with the opponents both being level four. It is always better for you. Like the core being higher level is like always better. And yeah, so, they were all around. Like yeah. the Nyx was just like, he's not really committing to me. He's Absolutely. just like walking around. He was going back and forth and it felt, in retrospect, it felt like he was kind of wasting a bit of time. He was wasting a ton of time. And so my point yeah. is, is that you had a really awkward lane. It felt really weird to play. And it's because your Drow's oh. pick basically griefed you. Like that Drow pick, like, if I pick Crystal Maiden 5 and I'm in a 7.5k AK game and my and my support and my carry picks Drow, I'm like, this guy just grief yeah. me. I hope we don't feed. Like, <laughs> that's actually what I'm thinking to myself. In, in fairness to this guy, though, like Kai, he usually plays support. So maybe he was just comfortable with the Drow pick. And hey, he really wanted to at the best. lower brackets, it's more yeah. important to play a hero you're comfortable with than the perfect hero. Yeah. But yeah, it's I like, know. it is still a thing where, you know... Like, to, I'm teaching everybody at the point. I'm trying to teach as many people watching as possible. As a carry, yes, please, I need yeah. to think how my support wants to play the lane and then pick a hero that goes with that well. Drow and CM and is just not a thing. You will literally never see Drow 5 or 5 position CM, Drow 1 in a pro match. You will not see it. You, like, you will see Drow played with Bane, Ogre, Undying, Tree. Like, it'll always be a melee or bane, like, with, uh, with Drow. So, it's kind of funny that uh, you, you see that, but uh, that's the kind of stuff that, as matchups go on, you can also learn what heroes work well together. And a lot like, of wait, that... If, if I got Jakiro, maybe that would have been a little bit better. Jakiro's a I bit guess. better. It's not, like, it's not ideal. You may see Jakiro Drow. Like, that's not terrible. It's definitely not yeah. worse. It's, not, it's definitely better than, than CM Drow. Um, yes. But okay, so we did the live replay, or we did Oof. the live session. We, I was thinking the remainder of the two hours could be us going over the game. Is that cool yes. with you? Yes. Okay. Yes, please, uh, please. That would, that's uh, actually the most productive thing we can do. But what I love, Coach, is you are either the control or the damage. You need to realize which part of the equation you are. Yep. That freaking simplifies so many things for me. Just those two sentences. Because I'm just like... Before he said, I need to play around tracks. But when you just simplified it like that, you're either the control or the damage. Are you the stun or are you the damage? Which part of the equation you are? That for me is fucking huge, Coach B. I was just like, oh, sh then I'll be, re I, when I go forward my game, somebody like, all right, who's freaking dealing damage the most? Who do, and I like what you said a while ago, like, there's a, someone that needs to farm. Do I have a farming or do I have a damage dealer? And Drow is essentially a late game, right? So she needed to farm, correct? Drow usually needs at least one or two small items to, like, really ramp really up her effective. damage. Yeah. yeah. she She's like a get to level six because she's pretty strong laner usually. And then chill for, like, five to ten minutes and then go. That's usually what Drow is for the most part. There's like obviously exceptions to that where sometimes she farms a bit longer, sometimes she's stronger a bit earlier, but most of the time, kind of what your drow did where he got Dragonlance, Manta, and then ran at people. Like that's basically what a drow game normally looks like. So in those types of cases, when I tell you you're supposed to play with Tusk, it's okay if you include drow in the gank or the kill, 
but usually that means you'll be going to her like she's not joining you you'll be like she'll be farming and you'll gank to where she's farming and kill somebody with that but just to uh it's funny when we were coaching live i couldn't see your player perspective so i never knew you know what you were what you were looking at or anything like that um okay. so now okay. i can kind of check we'll see you here what all right coach. what you were doing so I was uh, keeping I was keeping in mind mana all the time. I'm like, he gave me the mana thing. I need to buy mana. There were some instances where I kind of bought a little bit late in regards to the clarities, but I try to keep it as consistent as possible. So a subject I know you're gonna or my viewers are gonna ask about. I even saw it before the game started. Is I'm gonna ask you how often do you play with divine players on your team? Mm. A fair amount. A fair amount. Okay. I would say, uh, I would say, how often do I play? For, for, uh, cause when I stream, we usually have a lobby game. Okay. With all, with all the people I play with, so, uh, with all the people uh, watching. So I just, it's just a free for all. So usually there are some divine players coming in there. And, uh, I noticed with divine players, man, they move so much faster. Yeah, the game's like, just way faster, right? And they're just like, I've, and I, I've had, I remember one particular game where, they synergize so well, and I think they were at least ancient divine, uh, legend to legend to divine players. We just couldn't do anything. They were just reacting, responding, moving so efficiently that even if we responded the best way, they already had the better team. They already had the levels, and they just they were just moving so efficiently, and we just couldn't do anything. So, so I do play a decent amount with them. Yeah. Okay. So I, I wanted to comment on this because I know people will ask. I personally believe that like no more than half of your games should be outside of your skill bracket. Like I personally believe that at least half of your games should be within like one to one point five k of your MMR. So like if you're one point one one point two, I would say at least half of your game should be primarily two k players in your game. Um, I think that it's good practice. It can be okay to play with people way above you. But sometimes, like, it include, I kind of saw it a bit in this game, uh, for anyone who is watching closely. There's just times where you're super overwhelmed because the game yep. is moving way faster than you are used to. And yes. I don't think that's good all the time. I think it's okay to learn from and to experience, uh, but I also think that it can take away from your learning process if you do that every single game. So I'm just commenting about that. I don't have a problem when this kind of stuff happens. But I do want to make sure, because the closer it is to your MMR, the more impact you have to have to win the game. So it's like, if you're playing with Divine players, there is a chance that they just carry you and you do literally nothing. I'm not saying that's what happened this game, but that is potentially something that could happen. And if you're playing with all 1k, 2k players, you're going to have to have an above average impact as a 5 position to win the game. Like, yeah. you, you will. Um, so... Or at least you're much more likely to. Uh, so I want to comment Arcon, on that real Arcon quick. Arcon or below, basically. Just stick to Archon or below. Don't play with Legend players. I would say that's a good... That's a good. Uh, I'd say 1.5 or so above you. So meaning like as you climb in Mamar, that can keep, you know, that can keep going higher. So and if you want... The highest rank I can play with, Coach. Would like, I would say max 3k players like in your game. So in rank, that's all it's going to allow you to play with anyways. But if you're playing yeah. private lobbies, as long as it's not the majority of your games, you can play with... High rank players, if you'd like. Um, okay. It's I will it, do that. the big thing for me is it's like I want you to learn to think faster, and it's really important to push yourself. But if somebody is so much higher above you, they're gonna think so much faster than you. Then at that I point, it's like panic mode, anything. freak out, right? Yeah. So yeah. it can become detrimental if you do it too often. So I just wanted okay. to comment on that before we uh, before we started the game. Uh, something we'll we haven't really talked about. So I agree. I definitely will do that. Okay, so let's play this out here. So it was good. You were super aggressive on the timber saw. The thing yes. I was a bit nervous about was that if you walk into this creep wave, what could be some possible repercussions of you walking at them that aggressively based on their uh, two heroes? If they decided to just jump at me like that, then I would have been dead. Yeah, but um, what is like the way they jump at you? What's the source of getting on top of you? What's the source of getting on top of me? I I don't quite understand. It's I'm either sorry. gap closing spells or stuns. Like that's all it is. Yes. So yes. what is their uh, I, source of getting on top of you? 
the Nyx stun. Okay, so the second Nyx mana burns you, what do you think to yourself? Um, I should definitely go back. Dude, he doesn't have freaking stun. You can play like a fucking raid boss. Like, that guy's a dumbass. He didn't level his stun. Like, what is he doing? Like, that's what really? I'm thinking. Like, I'm telling you that you were playing really aggressive. It kind of made me nervous here. And I was like, mm -hmm. because what if he gets stunned on top of this creep wave and then tanks like four creeps for an extra two seconds? And that's scary to me. And yeah. so at my bracket, if I did that against the Knicks, he'd stun me and I'd either die or take a thousand, like 500 damage. Like, that's what would happen. Yeah. Yes. And so yeah, I want you to try to start thinking about that, where it's like, this is the punishment if I'm aggressive, too aggressive. If I go too aggressive, this is how I would pay the price. And the, and if it's like, if that is included by Nick stunning you and he suddenly mana burns you level one, you're like, holy crap, like this guy's dad, this guy's terrible. This guy's bad. I was yeah. thinking uh, dead, Sorry, I was thinking uh, dead and bad at the same time. This guy's bad. Yeah. So it's like, oh great, I can put, I can maybe be more aggressive now uh, because he can't punish me other than burning my mana. And the second he did that, I would be more likely to like fly out another mango or another clarity because you're naturally going to have more mana problems. So this is funny because there's obviously no way I can talk about this during the game. After yes. everything I've just said, he just mana burns you level one, right? So you're not yeah. scared of dying position based. But you are gonna have mana problems. So how should that affect your skilling? I should have gotten uh, my third skill more. Yeah, you can't afford to use both of your spells when you're level three because you're getting no. mana burned. Like you just can't. So honestly, it, I ahead. didn't know about mana burn. I'm so sorry. Oh, you didn't I know did. when he W'd you there what he did? Like you didn't know what I that did? Know, I didn't know what his skills do. Okay, I here. Didn't. No, it's absolutely fine. So what happened was right here, he uses his spell on you. This is perfectly fine for learning. I, I don't always know, you know what heroes you've played against, right? When he does this, watch your mana. Okay. Did you see that? Okay. You went from yeah. 160 to 110. What his third what his second spell does is uh it burns your mana and does that much damage based on your int. So uh the higher oh. int you have, the more damage his second spell does. And how oh. much mana burn it does. Um, so, like, I can, you know, mouse over the skill. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, so what happens here is it's like, oh, I'm going to have more mana issues. This is something to remember with Nyx, right? Usually Nyx does not level this this early. <laughs> like, First, he doesn't do that. Yeah, usually they take this spell. That's usually what they take. But, um, you know, that's important. It's funny to me. I forget that, you know, since you're newer to the game you haven't even played against all these heroes before or at least enough to know all of their skills um oh, but yeah so i, I, I actually thought for a minute he was weaver i was like wait is that weaver i because i kind of i kind of mix up the two up so sorry i thought they were hey weaver. they're both bugs man that's in my book they're the same hero oh. yeah i'm so sorry yeah okay there it is oh that was nyx that's you know what's so funny this is a stupid thing but i was practicing weaver and i'm just like Okay, I want to leave. Yeah. To, I need to know his stance. And he had like like this time lapse where he goes back in time and gets the damage, and he puts bugs at you. And I was just like, "Where's his stun?" Because I thought he was Nyx. Doesn't he have that impale stun? And yeah, I was just he... like, <laughs> I, he has I, it now. I, yeah. Oh, there you go. We freaking got Radiant's man. That freaking tower is under attack. Top tower he was giving us a attack. hard time, coach. Yeah. The big thing for me here is that okay. I'm gonna say this nicely because please, please, I, please. I, 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 I'm like when I'm in my other coaching sessions, I tend to flame way harder because it's just yeah. funny. Like I, I just what I do with you, I with how nice you are, I just naturally become nicer. But <laughs> you're never killing this damn timber saw. Like you're just not. And if you're not. freaking out about killing him, you're just like ruining your course game. Like you're just ruining it. If I, I want you to see this many times that you guys were hitting the timber saw and your drow was just missing creeps here meaning like creeps of theirs were dying to your tower so the important thing is as a support if you're ever going for a kill i want you to remember that your goal in the lane is to get your carry as much gold and xp as possible that's that's your sole goal so if you're going for a kill it can't take him away from too many creeps oh. so here because you were pulling a lot because the timber saw is up in your face all the time, you were both Much feeling obliged. very pressured to do something about it. Okay. But for you and your carry, you should remain focused on creeps need to be getting killed by my carry. Where are the creeps? 
don't drag him away from the creeps too often. There's a lot of time that even supports in my bracket will take will tell me to go for a kill, and I'm like, hey, dude, I got like four creeps here. I'm gonna miss if I go for that kill. Like, I don't want to do that. And it's actually super important for a support to think about that because if you Just understand, if you understand how much you're gonna make your carry miss or not, you will know how likely your carry is to want to help you. Mm. So if your carry is not gonna miss that many creeps for helping you at any given moment. That's a great time to be like, if you think you should be aggressive, to tell him to come with you, right? Because it's like, if he's going to miss one creep, maybe he's willing to go for a kill. But in this mm -hmm. case, when you guys were like hitting the timber saw, what I tried to tell you during the game was there's creeps under tower, man. Like, look, this is what I see as a carry player. This is what I see. I don't give oh. a shit about this. I give a shit about this. This is so important. This is the bad thing here. And if your carry is really disciplined, He's just going to ignore you and go hit the creeps. But it is quite easy for a carry to get baited by their support player to go do stuff away from creeps. And in your bracket, it's much more likely for them to do that. So it's even better if you as a support don't make calls that drag them away from creeps. Oh, shit. So it's something to think about. This is a really hard lane. I'm going to be honest with you. You're in a game where it's higher MMR than what you're used to. And because of what I told you about the drow CM combo... It's gonna be a hard lane, so this yeah, is a lot. It, I'm telling you that like. I was a bit overwhelmed. I was just like. Absolutely. Because I'm getting pushed here too so early. I'm like, what are you walk? This is not a place you walk around yeah, in. Man. It's freaky, man. Timber is one of those heroes that's like unkillable from five to ten minutes, pretty much. I'm just like, what are you doing mid tier one tier two? This is not a place you freaking hang out at, bro. This is not how I was freaking a little bit um panicked i was just like what is he why is he pushing this far is this something he can do <sighs> so here's the deal you went for a pull mm. and it didn't work because the drow was still killing a creep underneath much like obliged. right here is what happened yeah okay so now that you failed the pull it's just like a creep wave finishing so you have to reassess the lane equilibrium right immediately yeah. when a creep wave finishes when you miss a pull when you get a pull Assess the lane equilibrium. So what's it going to do right now? Like, what's if happening can... with the lane right now? Uh, the lane right now is... Oh, we just have... Oh, they're pushing. That lane's pushing us. Okay, so wait. It's pushing you or you're pushing it? How many creeps are... do you have and how many creeps do they have? We Wait, we have... Oh, they have one, two, three, four creeps, right? And wait, I'm sorry. The green ones are them, right? Yeah, green are them, red are you. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. It's it's just what looks different yeah, I based understand. on my perspective. Um, oh, we're pushing, we're pushing. So what should you do right now? Um, if we are pushing... Wait, if they're pushing, we should definitely keep pulling. Okay. If, um, wait. You already answered the question. It's 311. What? It's 311, and you said if it's pushing, you should keep pulling, right? Yeah. So, did I pull? I did not pull. I was just hanging out right? there. So this is the time we're trying to eliminate from you as a support player. You're in a high stress lane. This is a high stress lane. So the thing that is funny when I watch pro matches and you'll see these 8K players making this like appearingly dumbass mistake you're gonna make way more mistakes playing against 4k players than you'll ever make playing against 1k players because mm -hmm. they're putting way more pressure on you they're way up in their face in your face they're forcing yeah. mistakes that you wouldn't otherwise make if they weren't pressuring you and yes. the funny thing is that a player only looks as good or bad as who they're playing against and so an AK player can absolutely look like a dumbass if they're playing against another AK or a 9K player that just outplays yeah. them at that given moment, right? So my point is, is that as you play against better players, the focus you need to continue having is remaining eyes on the prize. You know, lane equilibrium, pulling, everything. Like, things are going to fail. People are going to stop you from pulling. People are going to yeah. be up in your face, right? That's what was happening in this lane. And these are the kind of mistakes that are going to happen when you're in high-pressure scenarios. And yep. the more we can eliminate them, 
the better, right? The more often that you're doing it correctly, you know, you have the knowledge, you know, you're supposed to do yes. this, but yes. when you're under a lot of pressure, it's going to naturally make you forget things that you already know. So just reminding yourself, like I would hope in the games where you're under a lot of pressure that at like 320, you should, you'd be like, oh, I should have pulled, you know, in this game, you ended up going, okay, I'm going to pull at 345. That's what you did. So yeah. you did end up doing the right thing. It was just 30 seconds too late. 30 seconds too late, yeah. Yes, and that's, people don't Probably realize, not. that's what decides MMR, 100%. How fast you make decisions and how correct they are. So for mm -hmm. you, you made the decision 30 seconds too late. If we can get that, like, where 80%, 90% of the time you're doing it on time, yeah. like, that's going to, it's, those type of decisions are going to make such a huge difference for your success as a laner, and a support yes. player and all that kind of stuff. So, Got you, coach, I love the, your tip about the main priority to lane is your. So basically, if they're down there and all those creeps on the left, basically on lane, are just going to my carry, that's great. Yeah, that's perfectly that's, fine. I'm like, all right, you guys can hang out. So them getting the farm bottom is okay. That's fine. Them getting the farm, the opponent team getting the farm over here. The yeah, the Thanks stacks. Yeah, that's okay. Fun. Okay, so. Based on what I told you about Drowsium, this is a very aggressive place for you to posture, okay? Mm -hmm. Meaning if this is their half of the lane, right? Like we're gonna divide the lane in half, like right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So based on what I asked or what I told you about this matchup, who's playing in whose face here? Is it you guys playing in their face? They're, they're, or... playing, they're playing in our face. So in our face. because you understand that, you're pretty much never going over here. Mm -hmm. Like in a lane where you're the aggressors, you're the stronger ones. A lot of the action is going to be happening over here, right? Like that's yes, yeah, I got you. And in this lane, all the action is going to be happening here. Like this is your home. This is where you're living, right? Like you, in an if ideal scenario, you're not leaving this area. Go ahead. So if they're coming to us, that's like that's pretty good. If it means that my carry is getting his farm on lane. Yeah, because since they're the aggressors, you can't afford to have your carry forced to be up here. Like, he can't be up here. So the creeps your carry is going to get are all back here. Like, all of them are back here. So if the creeps are back here, great. You know, that's exactly where you want them to be. Um, and that's based on understanding your hero plays very far back, and so does Drow. So um, if your carry was more of like an Ursa, then if he wants to play more aggressively, your level of aggression is purely based on following him. Like, if he wants to be aggressive, you can follow. As long as you're behind him, your positioning is correct. So, does that make sense? So, like... No, I got it, Coach. Yeah, on sure. CM, you're pretty much never in front of your carry, right? Like, you're never going to be in front of your carry. So, your level of aggression is going to be purely based on how aggressive your carry can be. And as a drow, she's going to be very passive, very far back, which means you're going to be very far back. It's like if you're an ogre, you should be in front of the drow. So it's like, you know, if she's going to be back here, like way at the tower, you should probably be within range of her, but in front of her. So yes. it's like that's an example of um, understanding your own support hero. It's like Jakiro, he can kind of play in front, but Shaman and Crystal Maiden, they're pretty much... Back always in back so um where your back is is completely determined by your carry heroes your hero right. hero plays i love i'm writing this down coach yeah go ahead i'll look for the next point plays in the back that's a great one understand if your support hero plays in front or plays in the back that's a really important one. i love that there are two sides of the lane um uh the the um decide realize which part which part of the lane is optimal based on your pair and the opponent's room and your matchup and matchup so I can tell you from my own understanding of Dota that you guys were never going to get a kill in this lane unless Tusk came. Yes. That's the only time you're ever going to get a kill. And that's just from me playing a lot of Dota. You know, it's not like I thought of that myself. I just played Dota and I realized I can't kill this hero with these heroes unless I have that hero, you know. Um, so this is the stuff you start paying attention to. How many times have you tried to kill Timber prior to Tusk coming here? 
Um, so many times and they didn't have work. failed. Nope. And the second Tusk came to your lane, you killed the Nyx, right? It wasn't the yes. Timber, but you killed the Nyx. So in these types of games, it's really important that you th notice what the correct equation was. You know, how many heroes did we need for this to work? So next time when you're CM plus Drow or a similar matchup against Timber, you're not just going to keep trying to kill the Timber Saw over and over again. Um, I love so on top of that, I remember I actually forgot about this until just now. At five minutes, you guys were getting dove, and Dude. you called for a rotation. Yes. This is the type of stuff because I told you how timber saw works. It's going to happen. Yeah. Every time you play against timber saw. So it what you need dying. to start thinking is who on your team would rotate. Bloodseeker is not level six. Darkseer is not a hero that rotates. So you say, hey, Tusk, can you come top? If he says yes, you defend the tower and you try to kill the guy. If he says no, you don't expect rotations. You do not expect anything. You are on your own, figure it out. In that case, right? Um, I think I want you to really steer away from like, if possible saying, hey guys, can we get a teepee? We need someone to help here. Here need like, it actually can be really toxic communication, not because you're like an asshole, but because it's very vague and I need specific yes it's very vague right like so if you're going to defend a tower notice how much pressure they are putting on you right that's like the like yes. people above your bracket are going to naturally do that much more think about if they're going to pressure me who would i want here is it my mid laner is it my four is it my three if i don't know who do i think it is right like just guess and say hey man do you think you can come top and like, you want to say it ahead of time, because usually if it's already happening and you haven't called for it, it's yeah. too late. That's usually how Dota is. Go ahead. Coach, yeah. can, I, can I try to maybe just simulate what's the best sort of um, communication? Because you said it's toxic communication. I get it, because yeah. it's in general, and it actually can just kind of mess up all my teammates' games, because I'm being general. Yeah. I'm not addressing a specific person based on what's the most effective thing. Absolutely. I'm addre I'm addressing I'm communicating a vague strategy that's affecting all my teammates negatively. It's the same thing as you calling a kill for your drow when she's supposed to be hitting creep. She might do something she's not supposed to do because you made the call. And if you make a really vague call, it might make somebody who shouldn't TP just TP, you know? Mm -hmm. Um and if you at least called like hey, you know, hey, Darkseer, come TP top, and it doesn't work. You yourself can learn, okay, it wasn't the Darkseer. <laughs> it wasn't the Darkseer. Yeah. That but if and you just vaguely the... call it out, you're not going to learn anything from making a call. I love that. And that was based on, okay, the best way for me to realize what needs to... Uh, this is just coming from what you, you're teaching me and guiding on to me so far. The best way for me to realize who needs to rotate top is one... Uh, who does more damage? If we need more damage, who's the control and who's the damage, right? Yeah, absolutely. I was basically the control. Drow was the damage. Timber was too strong. So basically, Tusk was the best option that can rotate. Is it also fair to also understand, to influence this decision is, who needs to farm and not go away from the lane? Like, if this guy needs to farm right now and not get away from his lane then don't ask that guy to rotate to us oh absolutely that it also has to do with like if your drow wants to stay here because say your off laner was going to rotate it yeah. actually works much better if your carry is willing to then give them the lane because if they tp there as an off laner they're stuck right they can't go anywhere else so that mm -hmm. formula works best if your carry is happy to leave um and those like that, that's actually a really high level uh decision by the way just to be very yeah. clear there but it does matter and so i can tell you you can start thinking like who wants to be here what heroes don't mind TPing? does it ruin their game if they stop farming or whatever um it's less of a commitment for your mid laner because if he tp's there he can kind of like pretty quickly walk back to mid um yes. but for an off laner it's like a huge decision commitment. to yeah huge your commitment not at all. Is it also a fair thing? Let's say my mid laner is pretty much done farming and he's going to go jungle. 
Yeah. And my offlaner TPs, he can always go mid and try to get the creeps there. Oh, absolutely. So what could happen is in a, in a high level game, say your mid laner's jungling and my offlaner, if I'm a carry player and my offlaner TPs to me, my first instinct is to think, is there somewhere else I can go so my offlaner can have the lane? Is there somewhere I can go? So I would then see as a carry player that the mid lane's available, I would then TP mid. But if my carry player like, doesn't know what he's doing and I'm the offlane player, I would probably walk mid. Mm. Is that, like, it's, a, it's tough. Like, I, it, it shows how much goes into a single rotation at, like, the high level. It's a also, lot of if, decisions. Say, if, say, I stack at the... If I stack at our jungle near the outpost, that's also a really worthwhile factor. I stack, let's say, maybe two or three worth of stack. I'm like, all right, so we can definitely have our offlaner TP here because this carry can gonna go to jungle, and once our offlaner TP is here, he can just start pushing the wave and get the XP there. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. when you're dealing with heroes like Timber, they're gonna pressure your tower. So you have two mm -hmm. choices. Stall them as long as possible, or trade. Meaning you, you give them your tower and you go take a tower of your own. That's pretty much your options. Those are, anything in between is pretty bad. Okay, coach, yeah. uh, I'm just going to reassess this question because this has been coming up in my games a lot. Okay. When I, I come to a point in games where we're both pushing towers. Okay. And I come towards this decision where we keep pushing their tower or we go TP to them and get and try to kill them. Sometimes I don't know what the better decision is. Like you said, what, what I found very nice from this uh, live session is like you either need to defend one tower not both so both of you need to commit to either pushing and defending this tower or um uh, basically uh basically go one lane or the other but my question is what if both teams are committing to pushing towers yeah. how do you know what do you do do you commit to pushing that tower or do you commit to tping and defending that tower I don't know when to make that decision sometimes. So it's a combination of how fast both teams push. So if your team pushes faster, it's generally better to be the team that just stays where you are. And it's like mm -hmm. a game of chicken, right? It's like who's going to deal, you know, who's going to who's going to hit on the brakes and you know, let yeah. the other guy drive by. Um Yeah, okay. I see. But so it's a combination of that and then I'm going to I'm just going to be honest with you. I'll give you a very high-level concept that you can start thinking about. You just have to start okay. thinking about it on a basic level. Um, some heroes like to have the fights come to them. Other heroes yes. like to go to fights and initiate. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That is a f distinctive trait of heroes in Dota. Like a prime example would be Visage and Lycan and these summons heroes. They mm -hmm. never want to TP to fights. Ever. Because they don't have their summons on them. Like, they don't want to TP there. They want their summons to be pushing a lane, and they want to be sitting in that lane, and they want the opponent to have to walk through the summons and fight them. That's what they want to do. But if you're like a Beastmaster TPing somewhere, you're not going to have your summons on you. So it's like very rarely will you see a Beastmaster or a Lycan or a Visage be the person that TPs to go kill the other people. Those are mm. like extreme examples. Um, on the it. on the other hand, Drow <sighs> Drow's a little bit tricky, but usually you want the fight to be on your terms with a Drow. So Drow's the type of hero where if she has somebody on her team that wants to initiate, she's fine to follow them up. But if she has heroes on her team that protect her, she wants to stay where she's pushing. Mm -hmm. So in this game, it's like, okay, my cores are Darkseer, Bloodseeker... Yeah, they have Rupture, but that's about it. And Darkseer is much more of like a counter initiator. They go on one of your teammates, he vacuums them, places the wall, and they get punished for like grouping up on one person. So because of that, I'm, I'm just giving you the thought on this game specifically, and you can try to think about this for yourself in the future, every game you play. Yeah. Drow functions way better this game as having people run into her Mm. than have her run into people. Mm. So a lot of your good plays here are actually the enemy team playing on your side of the map, running into your drow, trying to run away, and then dying. Like, that's, what's, yeah. that's what a lot of the good plays that happen this game look like. Because she's uh, a burst. She bursts because you she, down. Yeah, and she slows you a lot. So she's like the turn potential of a, of a carry. Um, so it's like... 
you don't want heroes like certain heroes function better getting initiated onto and certain heroes function better doing the initiation and a lot of that has to do with deciding what team goes to to the other um like the prime examples are summons heroes and like venomancer those heroes they're like this is my part of the map i dare you to come fight me but what makes them strong as heroes is that they control an area Yes. So going somewhere that they don't control, they're actually a really weak hero. Like that's not Venomancer, that, Venomancer is like a prime example yeah. of this. He places it's a bunch of little war. Yeah. 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 It's like yeah. really hard to fight Venomancer when you have to walk through four of his wards to get to him. But if he TPs in front of you, you're like, hey guys, let's go kill this Venomancer. He's like a squishy ranged hero and he hasn't like set up his wall, you know? Um, so that's a just, those are like hyper examples, right? Every hero falls on the spectrum somewhere. Um, but when it comes to defending or pushing or not, it comes down to how fast you push and do your heroes function better initiating or getting initi like having the enemy team fight into them. That's got it. Coach. That's all. I got it. Coach. Yeah. And every hero you play with, you don't know the hero, you're learning the hero. Pay attention to which ones work better. You know, it's like, was it better that we got jumped and they came to us, or was it better that we fought them? You know? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's a lot of Dota is understanding what to look for, and then the only way to learn it and get better at it is experiencing it. Like, that, it's, it's the only way. Like, a lot of this stuff, I would never have known if I had never played these matchups before. I've played against Timbersaw offlane 150 times, probably. You know, I've played against it a lot. I know exactly so what Timbersaw does. Go down. So when that drow picker just like, oh god. Yeah, yeah no, I trust me. I face palm, but I'm like, I'm not gonna make him panic by telling him that was a terrible drow pick. <laughs> you know, that's the last thing I want to do. Um, because I'll get nervous. But you knew you're yeah. like, oh, these guys, Ari, this is your final exam. It's hard. They're yeah. Gonna kill I absolutely knew your lane was going to be hard, but I, like, I think telling you your lane is going to be hard is going to make it even worse. It's not going to, like, help you in any way, so. So this is the stuff you just kind of have to pay attention to. Timbersaw is not a hero you poke down. You don't trade with him. You either full to zero him or ignore him. That's, like, that's how Timbersaw works. And you notice it here because you've tried to kind of consistently poke him down for, like, the last four minutes yeah man and it just doesn't work and i don't expect you to know that about timbersaw like if you're new to the lane you haven't played against the hero before but that's the kind of stuff where it's like what do these heroes do do we have to fold to zero them do we have to like slowly but surely wear them down you know how do we go about killing this guy you know these heavy sustain heroes are the ones where i say you either kill this guy or you ignore him like mm. uh the perfect heroes are bristleback timbersaw necrophos uh, Venomancer, these heroes like naturally sustain really well and they naturally win trades. Like if there's constant trading, they're gonna win. So Ignore in that case, you have to learn, it's like, okay, we're avoiding trading as much as possible. And then what's our formula for killing this guy? You know, how many heroes, what levels, you know, what spells do we need to kill this guy? And as long as you're paying attention over time, you're gonna get slowly, surely better at matchups. Um, but it's just, yeah, like you're noticing, I want you to see when you're playing against heroes, does it take consistent damage over time where eventually they run out of region and we kill them? Or is it that we have to go, like, they're going to be full health most of the time. We have to just burst them. That there's pretty much every hero falls in one of those two categories. Um, okay. So a lot of awkwardness here. A lot of awkwardness in Dota comes from either playing the map improperly or not understanding matchups. Yes, and that's what right. was happening top, right? You guys are trying to kill a guy you just can't kill. Um, that Jakiro, that's the first time I played against a Jakiro mid, too. I'm just like, Jakiro mid? So when you learn matchups here, I want to be very clear to you. You are level 3. This Jakiro yes. is level 8. He was getting me. I'm going to be straight with you. You are insane for walking into the river and hitting that range creep. Sorry. No, I'm not mad at you. I'm telling you that yeah. this is a very I'm strong enough to walk here move. Yeah. You should be very scared of a guy who's level 8 when you're level 3. Like, right? Like, you should be very scared. So if you're going to defend the tower, these are the type of things where I told you. You're doing the right thing. You're defending a tower. Now you need to learn how to properly defend the tower. I should have been sitting at behind with my armor and just freaking... Just nuking from as far away as possible. 
Exactly, yeah. right? So these are the type of things you learn. I don't expect you to know it, but I can tell you from my personal perspective, if I saw this in one of my games, I'd be like, damn, this CM is nuts. Like, this yeah, guy's got balls of steel, you know? Like, I was being a chihuahua. And the thing is, in your brackets, uh, people won't punish you as often. So playing against better players, this can actually help you a lot with this. Yeah. Because that Jakiro ran at you the second he saw you that far up. Um, and that's something better players will do much more often, is they'll try to punish you for being out of position. Um, okay, so at this point, you defended the tower. Wasn't perfect, but that's how you learn. Just pay attention to how far up you think you can be. Um, know that the reason you're there is to defend the tower, and how you go about that is up to you every single game, you know? Uh, that's for you to figure out. And I just, I noticed there, that's what you did wrong. Every game, if you feel like you took too much damage or you played too aggressively, that's how you learn. And that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's see. You're back top. Uh, in this case, I know I could have told you you're going to be under a lot of tower pressure, but it's kind of funny that you brought a Darkseer here and got a kill on Timber. It worked out. You brought yeah. enough heroes. I'm kind of surprised that worked, but kinda hey. Worked, yeah. You brought three heroes. Sometimes it's like you gotta go for it. If it doesn't work, so be it. If it works, great. You killed the Timbersaw. Timbersaw, these other tanky heroes, the first time you kill them, it becomes easier and easier to kill them after the first time. Because they're very snowball-y. They either are killable or they are very unkillable. Um, so in this case, the funny thing about this was, you know, Coach B, I was trying to, I was trying to get this to not. That's what you said that during was, the game. I, that's what I was trying to do because I, like, I didn't want to give him that gold. So, for you, it completely boils down to was the chance to get that deny worth dying? And no. I'm simply telling you that I don't want to make this decision for you, right? I want you to be like, okay, I was defending the tower. I was trying to stall it out. But here, I went for the deny and then I just died. And it's like, but okay. I got the egg off. Mm, yeah, oh, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. He just didn't have to egg. Like yeah, that guy just know. wasted egg. But he, yes. it was like it ended up being okay for you because he did use egg. If they had egg. had to use egg to kill you, that's different. Because yes. you'd be like, wow, I think they need to use egg to kill me. That could be worth it to me. Mm. Then make them do that. Sure. Like if you're going in thinking, hey, I think they're gonna have to use egg, then go for it. And sometimes I'll do the same thing, and then they don't have to use egg, and they kill me, and I'm like, damn, that was, that was not worth it at all. Um, and so you were doing the same thing here. You were defending a tower. You were trying to stall the push, whatever. And you went for a deny. And every decision like this, you're in the right part of the map. You're doing the right thing overall. But is your death worth what you got out of it? And that's going to be determining how you position yourself up here you know how passively are you playing how aggressively are you playing these type of mistakes are the ones that you have to learn from like you have to see this and be like okay they actually could just walk at me and there's nothing i could do about it shit yeah you know maybe i had to be this much farther away um or i can't go for this deny and that's it well, right i the focus is you're on the right part of the map you're defending the tower yeah. Just get better and better at doing it. This was the right part of the map, Coach, because, I mean, I know we we're supposed to push safe lane at this point, but was this the right decision to make at this point? What I'm saying is, is that Drow is not a carry that wants to stay in her safe lane. She wants to leave and she wants to go jungle. So somebody has to take the lane and stall it as much as possible. And you basically don't have a tower hitter. Because Drow this early on is... As much as people like to think she is, she's just too squishy. She tries to hit a tower. Most of the time, she's going to die. She's so die. you guys have no way of taking a tower. So if you have no way of taking a tower, your only play is to counterplay the opponent. Mm -hmm. So This is a new lesson, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're counterplaying the opponent, let's reverse it and understand how you would play as Radiant. Where are you pushing? Top. Top and mid, right? Top and mid. Yeah. So if you're on Dire and you're counterplaying Radiant, that's what you think you should do. You're playing top and mid. Bottom. Yeah, top and if we're Dire, yes, top. Yeah, if, if we're, you're Dire if we're and you're counterplaying. Yes, we're and if you're Radiant, bottom. you would play bottom. Yeah, exactly. Coach, let me see if I absorb this properly. If yeah. I have, if I have a lineup 
that basically needs to farm first and cannot push towers. They basically need to get stronger first and yeah. jungle. So in that case, we want to play um, at our dead lane, which is our safe lane, and just try to try to try to um, prevent or just um, hold off the push as much as possible. Absolutely. And how much you can hold that off is great. Like. So what is funny to me in my bracket, this still happens, where I'm playing with these like 6k, 7k players, and they'll be in your shoes here. They'll be a CM Drow versus a Timbersaw, and they're losing their tower at like eight minutes, mm. and they're freaking out. They're like, guys, we need to defend this tower. We're losing our safe link tower in eight minutes. My I response is, you're Drow CM against the Timber. Did you really not expect to lose this tower? Did you really not expect that? Like. That is what's going to happen. You guys are 6 or 7k. You are good enough to know that Drow and CM cannot defend the tower versus Timber, and Timber is a hero that shoves the tower. These things, if you pay attention to it, starts to become very predictable. Like, Timber Saw is always going to be up in your face. He's always going to be pushing your tower. You know, if it's an offlane, you know, Pangolier or a Wind Ranger, those heroes don't really hit your tower. So your tower is not under threat. You're going to start that noticing that some offlaners will always pressure your tower. Some heroes just don't. Um, and that's something where as you pay attention to this over and over, you can learn whether or not you're supposed to play defensive or offensive. Coach, can I write this down? This Absolutely. Is Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll look for the next thing to talk about as you're, as you're writing that down. Uh, when you're... So this is this is count this is a uh, this is this is counter dead lane. This is not the dead lane strategy. This is the plan B. This is the this is the alternate strategy. Yes, this when is one of the exceptions, and it's usually recognized by your team can't take objectives. When your core or team cannot take objectives, then pushing the dead lane, pushing the safe lane, the safe lane, right? Yeah, safe, safe lane. lane. Pushing the safe lane is not the optimal strategy. Optimal strategy. Counter, counter pushing? What is it? Counter? D pushing, counter pushing, whatever. Counter, uh, counter pushing or preventing the enemy team. Enemy team pushing your safe lane. Safe lane is the optimal strategy at the moment so that your so that your cores can farm absolutely and get stronger coach this is huge because sometimes you know what i do all my games like yeah listen we need to push the dead lane and there are some players are just like no we don't man yeah no, we can't we do that yet but coach me told me i need to push the i'm like you have no idea how many smokes to the safe lane i've called nice like, hey and and, and 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 most times I think we were doing pretty well, but this is like like you said, there's the next level of things that you need to understand so that you understand the exceptions. And this was a really important one for me to understand because sometimes you don't push the dead lane, you just don't push the safe lane. Sometimes you need to understand it based on the heroes you have, because they cannot take objectives at Absolutely. the moment. Yeah, at the current moment. And so for you, if you're not in objective taking mode, you are in stall until I can take objective mode. Right, so I love the cool it. thing about this is that this game that I gave that you gave me here, because they have a timber saw off lane and a Jakiro mid, and you don't have a tower pusher. If we're on a spectrum of one to ten, where ten is your team always wanting to push, and one is the opponent team always wanting to push, and five means both teams have about equal push. This game right. is literally a one. A one. Okay, this game is literally a one. Like your team cannot take any buildings. And their team is going to be putting a shit ton of pressure on your buildings. So this is an example where pushing their safe lane is just the worst option. Because it is on the pole. Like, this is like one out of 25 games. But it's going to be oh, holy very shit, significant. Yeah, it's, it's very important in this game, right? This like If the game's like a three or four, maybe you can just go push their safe lane and trade towers. Maybe they'll get more towers out of it because they push better than you. But yeah. you can still get something. This is a game where you're going to get absolutely nothing and you have to hold them off as long as possible. So my question for you is, I told you with Timbersaw, how does this hero work? What is our approach to dealing with Timbersaw? He snowballs. Okay. Right? 
Do so, we trade with this guy? Do we sit in the lane against this guy? Um, uh, we need to, based on our conversations, is um, we need to prevent him from getting to level three as much as possible. I'm talking yes. about the lanes already happened. It's five minutes in. Oh, we do not want to trade with this guy. Okay, what do we do with this guy? How do we handle Timbersaw? Oh, that's a good question. So How what's Timbersaw going to be doing? Timbersaw is going to be pushing lanes. He's going to be up in our face, underneath our tower, tanking creeps, tanking tower, pushing the lane. We so be how ready do we handle this guy? We'd be ready for him in our lane with, let's say, maybe three heroes that can kill him. And when he pushes, we freaking kill him. So you we either prepare. do that or what? We don't play around. Play. We just try to kill other heroes. Ignore okay, so you ignore him. So the ignoring can be in several forms. The ignoring can be yeah. that you guys all just ditch the lane and let him have it. Or yeah. you can just solely focus on nuking the creep wave out and preventing him from taking the tower. But it's not yeah. an interaction with him. You're ignoring him and dodging him, but you're just trying to defend your own tower. So your so approach if, to Timbersaw is If I either, cut around him and get the wave before him is that what you're oh saying? absolutely that's an option you can get creative i'm saying that you can avoid him at all costs i told you your two choices are what they are to ignore him or to or all in kill him that is your two choices mm -hmm. that ignoring can like i said be leave him alone on his side of the map or it can be figure out creative ways to prevent him from pushing your tower it can be cutting the creep wave it can be nuking from a long range it can be literally like if you watch professional teams they'll sometimes bring two or three heroes just to de-push the guy. Like, just to prevent the wave from killing their tower because they know they can't kill the Timbersaw, but they also don't want to lose their tower. So they're like, we're going to bring three freaking heroes because we know that's how many we need. I'm not expecting you to know that. But what I am yes. expecting you to know is you either do the ignoring thing or all-in commit. So why does this play right here work? Radiance this play, why does this play work? It's, it's Drow, it's me, and who's this other? It's Tuss! It is an all-in play by three heroes on your team to kill the guy. Yes. It's we just that in. simple. Like, it's this either, like, you have to do this. Like, this is the play. Like, if it doesn't work and the guy barely escapes, maybe next time you'll be like, I might have needed an extra hero. You know? Yeah. Or maybe we could have played it better. Or whatever because they already got mid they got our mid already i was just like oh so remember how i told you when you were defending towers you have like this out of position where you're only allowed to walk up a certain distance yes the same thing applies to timbersaw where he's pressuring your towers and here's he's only allowed to walk so far he walked far he walked too far he's out of position as well so you can start to pay attention to based on matchups based on how strong your heroes are, whatever. How far do I think Timbersaw is allowed to be before he dies to us? And if he does, there's like, oh, he's dead, dude. He's dead. Yeah, he's gonna die, like, right? Those this... first, those, there's like the one extra or two extra steps that you take. What I notice also in laning, when these guys commit to a certain space, yeah. they're dead. It's like, oh, absolutely. And if, and if you can time that space, if you can predict, oh, this this dude's about to push, come two steps too far. And you capitalize with a skill and a stun, and we both commit at that moment. That's a really good instinct to hone. That is a hundred percent the skill involved in Dota. I'm not even like I'm literally telling you in my bracket the way I work is I know exactly where that line is in almost every matchup that I'm familiar with. Like if I'm playing a hero I've played a bunch of times before, and I'm playing a matchup I've already played before, I will literally communicate to my support saying if this guy walks here, he will die. Be ready and if the guy walks there we kill him right like that's the kind of stuff where you learn that and you said it is important to home it's very important it. right yeah it's really cool that you came to that conclusion on your own that's really cool but it is absolutely what everything i'm telling you is when yeah. you say like how do i get better at this all that kind of stuff i'm trying to give you the tools to think about but honing the skill completely comes down to you noticing it in your games you that's know amazing. just that's amazing yeah, it's realize. really cool that's yeah, exactly I, the skill in dota no. Thank you for acknowledging it. Thank you. Yeah. That that definitely gives definitely uh, heading the right direction. That's great. Yeah, and so it's hard though. There's so many matchups in Dota, right? There's so many yeah, different yeah. 
you know, orientations or like uh, different lineups that you can play. But that's um, fun though. That's what makes that it is fun. fun. Like, All right, I'm gonna fucking figure this shit out. Oh wait, what happened? And that's what I realized, Coach, as well. Um, I realized from an 11, like a one pay player climbing, one of the biggest things that I realized that put me in a hole or a, that can put me in a hole is basically you have to learn how to apply, um, you have to learn how to lose the most productive way. Oh, because absolutely. What happens is if you lose and you kind of get emotional, when I say get emotional, we fucking lost. But every loss is a lesson. Like it really is like at 1K, every loss is a lesson and opportunity for you to get better and learn something. If you manage to not take that loss emotionally and not focus on your MMR and just look like, why did we lose that game? And really just want to learn it then you're going to climb the ranks a lot faster and you're not going to get in an emotional hole where you're just like, we fucking lost. And then you carry that to the next game and it snowballs. It snowballs in that emotional weight of, you know, thinking too, thinking too negatively or letting that loss kind of affect you the wrong way is what gets you to just be stagnant. And for me, I'm just like, I noticed when I'm like, when I started noticing, okay, why did we lose that game? I don't care if we lose. I'm like, I look forward to the loss. I'm like, why did we lose? What was the thing here? And I find myself being more motivated rather than deflated. And uh, I felt, I feel that's one of the important things at my level at 1K. Like, all right, this is a really healthy perspective to have. My simple response would be that that is the perspective I have tried to preach to my viewers for years. And the times where I achieve that perspective is when I play, I actually play 10 times better. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. And a lot of people have asked me, you know, BSJ, you never hit AK before. You know, you were out of the top 100 for a while. How all of a sudden did you climb back to like, you know, last, like two weeks ago, you were top 30, 8.6K. How'd you do it? I actually just took that mindset and applied it in my games. And I was playing wow. level-headed. I was playing... With the knowledge I already had, but I was executing and applying it way better. That's all I was wow. doing. I wasn't doing anything fancy that I had never done before. I was literally just playing disciplined, playing within my hero's limits, saying, what do I think is next? Not losing focus on the idea of the game. And all I'm saying is that for anyone watching, what Ari just said is exactly how you get better at Dota. You do not, like I said, you do not worry about your MMR. When people come into my stream saying, what do I spam to get out of 4K? I'm like, that is the worst mentality you can possibly have. How about what do I need to get better at at Dota to, like, to improve? And I'm like, That's if so you do improve, you will gain MMR. Like, if you are not gaining MMR, it is simply because you are not improving. Like, that is all there is to it. And... Um, if people are spamming, you know, OP heroes in the patch and stuff, what's going to happen is if all they know how to do is play that hero, the minute yeah. the next patch comes out, you're going to drop right back where you were, right? And then they're going to be the people that come into my chat saying, BSJ, I lost 800 MMR in the last two weeks. You know, I hate this new patch. And I'm like, I sure you just spammed like in last patch. I'm sure that's what you did. So it's yeah. like the thing for the, the approach that you have is exactly what I've been trying to get. And I think it's not only good for gaining MMR, but it's also good to make the game way more enjoyable. Like the game is. is just way better. Like in these games on my Smurf, because I take with the hero challenge and everything, because I've taken the care out of actually my MMR or whatever, I still have relapses on my main account where I prioritize MMR more than I do Happens getting all of us. better. And that's when I usually step away from my main account. Usually when people ask me, why are you not on your main account? It's usually because I've recognized to myself that I've kind of relapsed a little bit and that I'm not in the right mindset right now. And so going back to my Smurf account now with playing the all hero challenge, I've literally gained 500 MMR playing random ass freaking hero every game. And I'm just like, all it takes is a good mindset, man. It makes so much of a big difference. I'm in these games and like the game's going a little bit rough. I don't even know what's going on because I'm on a hero I'm unfamiliar with. But all yeah. I focus is on is like, what can I do next? And what's my role in the team fight? And what lanes need to be pushed? And it is amazing how many games just play themselves and they just work out. I'm like, like how and many games have- You're having so much, you're having oh, more I'm fun. Oh, I'm enjoying it, I'm chill as fuck. Like, I'm like, I'm like yeah. 
like these games may be stressful in the sense that like it's high intensity there's a lot of action going yeah. on but in regards to like re like emotional reaction to anything that's going on in the game it's just like you know i'm chill and that's why i think some of the like almost all the best players in the world their personality is like this very stoic you know you take somebody like zai it's like he's just very chill very level-headed all the time and it's what you need to be it's exactly the key you need in dota especially like it's just mm -hmm. it's just calm decision making and so the cool thing about this game where you learned about you know Timbers. You learned about Timber Saw, you learned about having to play your own side of the map in a defensive mode. Eventually, when you defend for long enough, you break out onto the opponent map, right? You break mm -hmm. out and start doing things how you've normally thought about it. This was kind of that transition into the game, right? Yes. Now that your we teammates with... feel strong enough to go out on the opponent's side of the map, that does not necessarily mean you have to be winning. You just feel strong enough to walk out. You can just watch your cores, you know, are they walking on the other side of the map? That's like a good indicator for you. You're playing solo queue, none of your cores want to walk to the other side of the map. Even if they're wrong, none of them feel strong enough to do it. You know, they don't think they can. So in that case, you're playing in the defensive mode. But now your team's all bottom. Guess what? You're back into the normal mode we've preached every coaching session. And guess what? The enemy team, like a bunch of bad 3K, 4K players they are, yeah. are going to sit here in the bottom half of the map feeding to you. Great. Right? Like, this they isn't did. fancy. All that is happening is you guys are playing the right part of the map together. Strong and, enough. And you're strong enough to do it. And it's naturally, you're not going to cast spells perfectly. You're not going to do all that shit perfectly. Your team didn't team fight that perfectly. But it is that much more likely to work because of the place you're taking the fight. And the heroes on your team are like, okay, we feel strong enough to walk out of here. We're going to go do it now. Notice how earlier the defensive fights were actually in your favor because that's how you had to play. And now the aggressive fights are in your favor because your teammates felt strong enough to be aggressive. Yeah, our, our draw got strong, so yeah. things got easier after that. So this explains certain situations where we lose and we, I was like, we pushed the dead lane, but we lost. So I'm just like, this kind of explains... Honestly, Coach, in retrospect, this was the perfect final exam for me. It was a great it, final exam. Completely out of the comfort zone from what we've been yeah, talking about. Yeah, it was just like the complete thing. I'm like, I didn't execute what it was... I, I was I was supposed to execute the opposite of what you were trying to teach me, which broadened my perspective. Absolutely. It's, I love it. It's where what I told you is play like the ideal rule that I tell you and you'll learn exceptions. This is an example of a game where if you were to play ideally the way I've taught you, it would never work. And you, never you're going to start work. having to like notice these exceptions. That's amazing. And why. And what I'm telling you is if it doesn't work, it's because you're not strong enough to do it yet. So all if that means work. is eventually you're still supposed to do it. It's just that the, it has to be a point where you are actually strong enough to do it. So in this That's game, true. this is a perfect example where you weren't strong enough to do it yet. And they say, BSJ, why did you play the dead lane in your, as a carry of this game? It's like, because I wasn't strong enough to go play bottom yet. You know, and you may say, but isn't the dead lane more dangerous? It is your side of the map, theoretically. So if you have, like, if you're playing as a team, it is technically safer to be on your own side of the map. But the problem yes. is you don't want to play as a team on your side of the map, ideally, because you're not doing anything, right? You're not accomplishing any objectives. You're not pushing towers. You're not pressuring the opponent. So it's like the goal is if you're playing as a team to be on the other side of the map. But if you're not strong enough to do that yet, by all means, you are defending your side of the map. Chill. We, we, chill. Just chill. Absolutely. And remember in this game... My highlight was when your drow at 23, 24 minutes or so said, let's go yeah. push top tier one. And what did I say to that shit? I can't remember. What do you think I feel about pushing top tier one before? Oh, horrible. Oh, horrible. yeah, I remember that. I shut yeah. that shit down instantly. And you Me should too. try it. Yeah, you should try to do that. Like, make, like, try to get as much as you can in the habit of shutting that shit down. I right? was like, no, no, no. And, and drow shut it down as well. He's like, fuck that. That top is useless yeah or, no like, tusk yep. said that tusk said that your tusk oh, said that tusk, yeah oh, your drow made the call and your tusk said top tower is useless uh don't worry nice. about it so that was a good we're just like let's push up like no 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 no. i love it and these are like way more advanced players like in, in mmr but 
it's it's very much possible to make that wrong call. D dude, seven gay players do it, man. It happened to me today. I'm literally watching and I'm just like, why is my why team wanting to push bot? I don't I get it. it. I said, like, why are we here? I, I was watching it a little bit before going live. I was like, you're like, why are we here? I'm I had like, a DK that made the same call your draw made. And I'm like, how about we don't do that? <laughs> and yeah, then we just did it. And I, and I was like, really happy everyone to listened. To yeah, I'm uh, like, let's not push that tier one tower. Uh, it, it's really funny how like people just forget this shit. I swear to you, man. I'm teaching you concepts that 7K players just don't do, and I'm like, and that's dude, great. And, and you'll just gain him more way faster. I hate the mentality where it's like, hey, PSG, if 7K players aren't doing it, why are you even like, why does he need to know? And it's like, just because people in my bracket don't always do it, doesn't mean it's like acceptable yeah. to not understand it before that point. You know, I don't like this mentality of like, let's wait until I have to learn this kind of thing so at this point since you took the tier one tower you guys have two choices yeah play bottom and mid yeah to force objectives on your terms or play to play mid. top and mid to prevent the opponent team from rushing so pretty Ooh. much all your decision that comes down to in this stage in the game like this if you're dire because Roche is on the opposite side of the map that you would want to play is simply are we afraid of the opponent taking Roche if we play bottom i would say with that team they don't really take roche that well i don't have time to communicate this in the middle of the game but i think most of your successful plays are going to be around mid tier one or bottom um mm. so you guys playing top here is a bit awkward it is like it's better than splitting the map randomly like this is yep. better than being all over the place but yep. i think it is simply ideal for you guys to be around the bottom half so in this time i said this is a great time to smoke so when you and come to this realization in the game where okay we're all together top but i think it's better we should be bottom or vice versa right it could be the opposite way those are the perfect times to smoke it's like i think we should be bottom right now but we're top that's like the perfect time to smoke so that's why in the game i communicated smoking like i want to make sure you understand why i told you to do something so in this case, um, even though the fight's not perfect, the enemy team is not coordinated. Usually with Brewmaster, when he ults, you kind of like wait for it to run out. But this Timber Saw is completely out of position. Um, he dies. And I've communicated to you that your Bloodseeker's chasing. So in this case, yeah. when you guys get a kill, there's two options, right? You go back and push some lanes, or you go for objectives and chase more kills. Yes. So if we anyone on your team is going to hit a tower, who is it? It's going to be Drow or Bloodseeker. If anyone on your team is going to continue chasing people, who is it? It's going to be Drow, Tusk, or Bloodseeker. It's primarily Bloodseeker when it comes to chasing. Maybe Tusk. Drow is kind of like the damage dealer, right? She's not the lockdown. She's the damage dealer. So, oh, chasing people. Got so it. chasing Got people, it. yeah. So all I'm saying is I tell you, like, at this point, it's an option to back off or chase or push towers. I like to think on my team, who does what? If I'm the one responsible for chasing, I'm the one calling it. You know, like I'm saying like, okay guys, we're done here. Or hey guys, let's chase more, chase more, chase more. Um, and if I'm not the guy responsible for doing it, I just watch what the guys are doing. It is actually really toxic and bad communication for you to say to chase right now. Why? Oh, did I say chase? Here? I didn't say or you did this. I'm telling you, if you were to communicate to your team to chase right now, why would that be toxic? Why would that be toxic? Because we have no, we we basically used our ults already. Is your hero the one that chases? Um, no, not me. No, I'm. Then CM, why is dude. it toxic for you to communicate to your team to chase? Be because I'm I'm not a chasing hero. It is not your hero's job to do that. Yes, so you are yes. telling somebody whose hero it is to do that, to do something they didn't choose to do. Mm. So you are forcing them to chase somebody that even if it is the correct play, they did not think it was. So they are going to mess it up somehow. Mm. So when it comes to like, this is a huge lesson for people watching in communication. What is your hero's role? If it is not your role to chase, do not call chases. Because that's when you do some throwy ass shit because it is not your job to know whether or not to chase. It is your job to know who on your team chases and to just watch what they do. You know, 
if they want to keep chasing and you see Bloodseeker chasing, then by all means, follow him. Go. Right? Support that. Yeah. But if he's not chasing, what does that mean to you? Uh, we don't chase. Fight's over. Right? We're done here. Like, all right. So Push the from... lanes, keep me somewhere, or make a, put a plan a word. Exactly. Right? So all I was telling you during the game here was like, hey, your Bloodseeker's chasing. So like, so from... yeah, so you should immediately follow him. You were uh, chilling on these creeps for a second here, like I hitting them. That's yeah, the kind of stuff where I'm like, your Bloodseeker's chasing. Who gives a fuck about these two creeps? You know, nobody cares, okay, okay, right? Okay. That's, that's that's what nice I was like trying to... Thank you. Thank you for saying it nicely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, that's the sense of urgency you want to have because if your team chases here, your nuke could make the difference, you know? And it helped. It definitely it helps. It helps. And then sometimes you being there a second earlier will literally make or break whether or not that works. That case, it wasn't very close, right? It just worked. Yeah. But sometimes that extra little second could be game breaking so i've told you about mid-tier twos right yes what comes first roche or mid-tier twos um what comes first roche or mid-tier twos roche comes first so when your team was like you guys got a kill and i told you call roche call roche yes we did we called roche, but yes. your teammate was calling to push tier two do you remember this yes i remember yes and yes, i told yes, you yes, to shut go. that shit down it is always yeah, better had... to go roche it is always yes. better. I, I, who was he, the one who was calling? I know, territory? and I'm, it's funny though. I think it was Drow yeah. again. It's funny what? because I want people to realize this shit's rinse and repeat every single game. Roche before tier two. You know, if you're strong enough, you play bottom. If you're in defensive mode, you play top. We're obviously talking from Dyer's perspective right now. So it's like, it's not a secret. You can get really good at this and hone this over time. Just paying attention because you did you uh, you were instantly like oh yeah 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 let's go roche like as minute I reminded you you were like all about it you know you knew what you were talking about and the yes. minute the day that you're able to come to that conclusion um, instantly after the fight breaks out the fight ended you killed four heroes you instantly roche. call roche that's the day where you're like you know five k like that's the day where you're just. Like that's the dream. Like if you're you you'll, you'll, you'll win so many games in your bracket if you're making those kind of calls because nice. it is the right call and the faster you make that call the better. And it is oh, so that important. Is so helpful, man. That yeah. Was... The, the this is a part where I'm like, okay, so now you got Roche. This is when we tend to invade the triangle with Roche, right? So I was like, get these aggressive wards up. Just give yourself some vision. Like I said, a high ground, and you like you didn't choose that. Like you just chose somewhere. And it's like, hey, if you're going to chase somebody, do it, man. You guys chased him. Uh, you guys ran at him good here. He dies too. It's like, now yeah, they're yeah. chain feeding. You guys are just playing as a team better than they are. Like, that's all there is to it. This is obviously party queue, but I've noticed that in my games where I'm making some generally, you know, good calls in solo queue, my team is way better coordinated than the opponent team. Like, way better. Um, players like Dubu in my bracket... They straight up win from the position five because they make calls that are relevant to the team playing the right and, parts and of the map. And they listen to him. They're just like, oh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. People trust Dubu at my bracket, right? You know, he ranked 60 support player or whatever. Remember what I told you here? Okay, this is actually a really crucial moment in the game. So you guys killed, you guys killed somebody here, and they're all yes. dead, right? Yeah. So are you, if the enemy team is dead, are you an important part of killing that tier two? No. You are not needed, right? You don't hit yeah. that tower. And because the opponent team is dead, you, you are not needed there to protect them, right? Yes. So at this point, we are like, okay, we want this tier two. I don't do anything towards killing yeah. this tier two. What does that tell you? I can push other waves. Or you can go anywhere top. else, right? Like you can go somewhere else. That can be going to pick up bounties. That can be warding somewhere. That can be clearing waves. It can be all kinds of stuff, but you can go anywhere else you want. And, and a wave with and the wave bottom, I told you bottom instantly, right? This yeah, is like, a oh, game-winning play from a support player, any player in the game. This is a very natural really? move. You take the, like, it can be the opposite too. Like, it, meaning it can be where you guys start bottom and go to top. It is where your team is pushing a tower and you realize you are not needed and you set up the future pushes because what you're doing by being more efficient here is you're snowballing objectives. Okay, you're snowballing objectives. You're turning this one objective into more and more objectives. So the way this move works 
is it can start from bottom and go to top or top to go to bottom. It really doesn't matter. It just matters like which one you guys were pushing at the time. You guys are pushing top, you TP bottom, and I told you exactly in the game, have your team meet you halfway. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, to meet me meet me at uh, towards the safe lane. Yes, and so what happens is, I've used this word on stream during tournaments, this is the collapse move. It is that, like, people have memed about it and shit. It is literally the collapse move textbook. Like, this is literally textbook here. You TP bottom, you push out the wave, you have effectively closed off the entire map. Your team has taken a tier two, so top lane is in your favor. You are pushing bottom, so that lane is in your favor. Another one of your teammates has pushed mid, so your entire team just does this sweep to the bottom half of the map. Where do they go? Where does the opponent team go? The, the opponent team is going to go to us, probably. I'm yeah. saying that like if you've pushed in top, pushed in bottom, pushed in mid, and sweep to the bottom half of the map, what are they doing? They're either sitting top doing nothing, or they're yeah. bottom dying. Like, that's their two yes. choices. That's all they've got. Yeah, or, they're wait or they're waiting in base, waiting to Yeah, that's what I mean, right? They're waiting in top on. doing nothing, right? They're literally I doing nothing. You. So I the point you. is, when you're ahead like this in, like, a professional setting, there's no counterplay for the opponent. Like, that, it's just proper map movement by the team that's ahead. Like, this is what you're supposed to do. And there is no counterplay other than maybe preemptively thinking you're going to do this and they smoke right out of base and try to fight you. You know, like, that's, like, their only choice that could potentially punish your play and trust me you're not going to see that shit until like 7 8k right you're not going to see a five man smoke out of base quick uh you know until super high mmr so the point is you tp bottom here and you are effectively setting up the next objective this was me i remember in game i told you tp bottom and you were like oh i think i could push again and i told you to meet up with your team here and this is exactly what's supposed to happen the enemy team is separated they just got done defending top so their two of their heroes were top Suddenly, all five of your heroes are bottom. All three lanes are pushed in. The enemy yeah, team's like, what the fuck just happened? I'm in a 3K unranked party game, and the enemy team just, like, <laughs> collapsed the, the entire hell? map on us, and now we're dead. Like, I guarantee you, they've never seen that shit before. Like, they don't see that really? shit in their games. They don't see that shit. They don't have teams do that. And it's unranked, and it's unranked, yeah. What they saw was your team was four-man top 20 seconds ago. And they're like, oh, I guess I'll go farm bottom ancients. Yeah. And in Pro Dota, you do that shit. The enemy teams in the last 15 seconds, four man from top to mid to bottom. And yeah. the other guy pushed lane. And suddenly there's five heroes in your face. And you're like, and you're dead. well, that was quick. <laughs> you're like, shit. I thought I, I had time it. to farm bottom. And then I die. I guarantee you a 3K player has never experienced this in their life. They have never experienced this. They're like, I was like, dude, you're going to push bottom. You're going to join your team. Tell your team to come towards you. And it's like. You can make this call every damn game that your team has killed heroes, taking a tier two, and you don't want to go high ground. That's like it's the 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 the, the uh, parameters for when this is the play. And the reason you don't want to push high ground is by the time you get to high ground, they're all alive again, right? That's usually the indicator. You guys were pushing tier two. They were all respawning in like 25 seconds. By the time you get to tier three, they're already alive. Why Nothing. not? We, did, we, did, Go ahead. we didn't get any objective. Yeah, yeah. You're, say, you're saying that that's why it's so good to push tier two. Yeah, because at this point, your move is not actually to push objectives. Your move is to collapse the entire map such that they are pinned in their base. Mm. So the time they're dead, instead of punishing them by taking an extra tower, you are constricting anywhere they can play. That is what We're this move them, did. Man. You are choking them out. That is exactly what this play did. Um, very textbook. It can be from bottom to top, top to bottom, doesn't matter. You starts with you pushing a tier two and being like, we can't push high ground. In this case, it's a bit different because you got extra kills, you know, and uh, they just snowballed from here. Like they are, I guarantee you, this is what it looks like when a 5K stack plays against an AK stack. They just get outmaneuvered. They get way faster movements on the map by the opponent team, and they just feed one by one. It is absolutely what happens like your team made a very fast move here and this is absolutely something you are capable of calling and setting up as a five position like and that's the control you have at this stage in the game right later stage in the game these sick calls you can make these map control calls these lanes that you can push this is game winning shit it really is like were you guys not going to win this game maybe not were you going to win this game at 30 minutes if it weren't for this no like this just 
suddenly you guys didn't even do anything. Like, nothing really happened here. You just yeah. suddenly got five more kills and the enemy team's bottom racks is gone. It's like, yeah. okay, I guess we won. <laughs> I, honestly, I honestly thought we weren't going to win when freaking Timber was already pushing like 10 minutes. I'm just like, man, they already got her mid. They already got her thing. This is a hard game to win. Oh, it's a hard one, man. And then what happens is when heroes like Timber lose their momentum, suddenly the game... It's day so and night. Much. It's like so, yeah. that's why I really hate it when people give up against heroes like Timber. Because I'm like, guys, yeah. if we just kill this guy once, we can be back in it. Like we can have a chance. That's what Timber we does. Did. That's what the hero does. And, like and this is what, what we expect. When we, when we three manned all in, committed him. That's when we started actually snowballing towards winning. Yep. And so usually against heroes like Timber, where we talked about you'll be playing the top half of the map a lot. It's usually. At what point you can go bottom is the point where you're strong enough to kill Timber. Like, you killed Timber, now you can leave top, right? That's usually how it works. It's like if there's some hero putting a ton of pressure on you, usually the point that you're allowed to start putting pressure on them is the point that you were actually able to kill that guy. So it's like you kill that guy, and now you're like, okay, this pressure's not so much anymore. We can go somewhere else. Um, so what you guys did here is the classic other move, right? What you did was you pushed bottom, you got the racks, you took two or two mid, and then you just went right back top. So it's like, now you're controlling top and mid, the bottom lane is being pushed in by mega creeps or super creeps or whatever, and you're yes. once again constricting the map again, right? It's just this back and forth thing you're doing. The only thing that went wrong here is that your Bloodseeker TP bottom like a dunce and just left. <laughs> yeah. There's literally no reason your Bloodseeker should ever do this. It's game losing shit. It's the potential to throw. If you guys were in a closer game, this Bloodseeker could have potentially lost you the game. Mm. I'm not trying to be mean to this guy, but this is the kind of shit as a core you can do at like 30 minutes in and just throw unlosable games. Mm. Is when there's just nothing to gain from defending that tier two. It's going to get pushed. Like the lane's going to get pushed. You guys have super creeps. They don't, right? Yeah. The lane is going to get pushed. You should never be this far away from your team to go deal with a wave, unless you're like Ember. When we or... have, when we have, when we have already made, when we have super creeps. Yeah, in your case, the reason why I told you to TB away from your team was the entire enemy team we're was dead. Up. The entire and we enemy were, team we was were dead, right? Setting up to get racks, basically. Yeah, we were exactly. Setting up to get bottom racks, yeah. And in this case, the most of the enemy team is alive, and your team we is. Needed we needed you team fight. Yeah, we need to be... Exactly, well. right? So it's like, this play you guys are making is actually pretty good, but you do have to be careful of making this play if your Bloodseeker's playing the way he is. The perfect call here would be, hey, I know we're supposed to go high ground, or at least supposed to be aggressive on the map like this, but my Bloodseeker's just not here. I guess we should chill. Like, that's... That's the lesson for you, That's buddy. the... That, like, that's... It is equally on you and the rest of your team for still making that play as it is on him, but it is originally his screw-up. Um, you just didn't see those wards, unfortunately. I didn't see the ward. Yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Um, but got the first glimmer out of there, which was fine. If your teammates, by the way, want to push bottom, what you guys should do is play around mid and have somebody cut the wave right here. Hmm. So what that means is you're effectively pushing bottom, but you're not traveling all the way back to your side of the map to do it. Mm -hmm. So like if your Got team it. wanted to play strong like right here, like you were doing, what Bloodseeker's yeah. proper move was if he wanted to push bottom would be bottom. to show himself right here and cut it and then immediately cut, cut walk the back to you guys. Like that's Because eventually he... that, that's <clears throat> also getting our creep waves to push. Yeah, eventually out, it's going to, yeah, it's going to speed it up. It takes... The resistance. Yeah, you just took, you just did it the opposite way. Exactly. It's like it takes a bit longer, but it effectively does the same thing. It does the same thing, yeah. <clears throat> and most importantly, you're not leaving your team to fight without you, right? Like that's the more important part. You'd rather do it slowly in a way that's not exploitable than in a way that's faster but punishable by by the opponent team. Um, so we are going a bit long. Um, we we um, did. I was trying to. But it's I a was, great I was, final was, exam. I was, I was it was the best final exam. Do you uh, have any final thoughts for the final session of the season or whatever? Yes, um, Coach, um, I have thoroughly enjoyed these five weeks. I, I really, you are a wonderful teacher. Thank and uh, I, I love that you help me realize things for myself. And I have done that. And I will continuously do that. One of the great things I 
especially really, really liked is you acknowledging the perspectives I was realizing for myself. When you said that is exactly what I try to do for my streams. When I get that acknowledgement from a, you know, top 50, top 100 player, that really gives me confidence. And uh, to know that, you know, your MMR is a reflection basically of just the right attitude. That's it. It's not winning, right? It's just a reflection of the right attitude to improve in the game. That's Absolutely. all it is. That's all it is. And for me to slowly understand that and make that part of who I am as a player, 1K or, you know, whatever rank that would have been, but for me, it's 1K. That's very, very motivating and very, very uh, powerful for me and definitely will build my confidence in terms of moving forward. Um, I, I've, I've enjoyed this so much, Coach B. And uh, I do definitely want to keep this going. Um, and uh, I will do my best to make sure that we can continue on this uh, journey. But so far, these five weeks have been amazing. And I really, really thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I think it's important for people <clears throat> watching that I emphasize, sorry, I just like throat, talking a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it's really important that people realize that the reason why this stuff, in my opinion, can work for somebody is because of the attitude that you have towards learning and getting better. And Dota, as much of a toxic game as it can be, I have realized when I approach it from the perspective we've been talking about, it is actually a really fun game. Like it is so I'm much, it's, fun, it's, like, it's like a puzzle that you're constantly solving and you're drilling yourself on these questions, but it's like, it's literally like a puzzle in the form of yeah, an yeah. interactive video game, right? It's like, yeah, like, like I'm pushing buttons and I'm casting spells and you know, it's like, it's for me, it's, you know, it's like 70 chess. That's what I feel like, you know, I have to think five moves <laughs> yeah. ahead and there's like a bunch of people fighting each other. But at the end of the day, it is like a chess board where I'm planning out my moves, planning out what I'm going to do. And, and it's and really like, fun. Do do? And do for me, like for playing yeah. these, like all hero challenges and stuff, it's been quite a, an experience recently just to be like, wow, it's crazy how impactful I can be on these heroes that I have no idea what I'm freaking doing. If I just apply my general knowledge of Dota. Having fun. You're and having fun. I'm having the right attitude of, okay, I'm not sure exactly what my hero does, but I know yeah. I'm supposed to be here and we'll see how it works out. <laughs> and it's like, at that point, I'm learning a lot. I'll die randomly like an idiot because I don't know for sure, but I know I'm in the right place. And I'm like, okay, yeah. maybe next time I'll do that a bit better. Maybe I'll push my buttons a bit better and the crazy thing is to me, I just don't care about dying or I don't care about losing. I don't care about an individual failures yeah. because I'm focused on the bigger picture. And that's what you kind of said earlier. And it's been quite a treat for that. So I appreciate Thank that. You. And uh, hope you. everyone watching has also maybe come to realize that a bit too. Thank you very much, Coach B. Uh, I, I have... I have a long way to go. Um, I haven't got out of Oregon yet, but I would, I would definitely, I will freaking message you. If I'm about to hit that Crusader, I want to make sure to let you know. I'm like, for Coach sure. B, yo, 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 Coach B, take some time for a minute and just kind of enjoy this moment with me. Because uh, definitely you were very much a big part of that. I have a long way to go. I definitely, I'm just enjoying myself. And uh, last but not the least, thank you so much to Predator Philippines Absolutely. for making this possible. Um, uh, it was a, such a treat and honestly, man, um, from learning the game and just making, just having so much fun, me just finally loving the game organically and naturally, because I didn't know what I was doing 2016. I tried, but I couldn't. It's just getting me that much closer to the Dota community who have already, who has already given me so much. I've been able to travel the world host all these events and to get to love the game the same way you guys love it like really genuinely do is like just getting me to just build that much of a better relationship with the community and uh, that i definitely definitely appreciate and that i definitely treasure and i do i do love being able to get to do that so thank you bsj for making that possible and thank you predator philippines for enabling these things to happen and i would love to do this again i would love to keep this going Coach B. We'll keep you guys um, posted, right? That's what we're going to do. What's that? I said we'll keep everyone posted about the future of doing this again. Yes, for sure. We will keep everyone posted. Chat, you've been great. Thank you for also hanging out in my streams. And uh, thank you for the encouragement. And uh, Coach B, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you. Have a good one, man. I'll talk to you later. I will talk to you later. Sir. Take time. care and stay. All right. See you guys. <laughs>